but there's just a slight delay before I can get the link. Oh, I gotta get my thing going. Totally need the thing. I gotta get my uh, toolbox going. Hold on. This is still this from what I had from the RAN. Welcome to the show, Anthony, by the way. Sorry, it's been a, a little bit of a mess. <laughs> No problem. Go. Okay, I've got it. I'm putting it in our Google Hangout chat. There you go. Thank you, everyone, for who is linking it in the chat. You guys are awesome. Sweetness. Okay. Now I need. Do you mind throwing the link into? Oh wait, there it is. Okay, cool. Have you got it? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. Thanks. I got Great. that. Thanks. Thank you. It's there. Okay, I think people are starting to filter through now. Just give it a few more seconds for people to get back in. Sorry about this, guys. <laughs> That's all good. We got it in there. I can see your drawing now. It's looking cool. It reminds yeah, I... me. It reminds me of like a um, like a Greek statue. <laughs> it does feel like a Greek statue. It's not. It's funny. I don't know. I'm not like. I'm not feeling this one as much, but that's all right. It'll be good. It'll be good. It's not gonna get. It's no, not gonna I get agree with you. So I'm having the same issue. Okay. I think we've got basically everyone back in. So welcome back to part two. Sorry about the little <laughs> mix-up, um, but I'd like you. I'd like to welcome our wonderful guest, Mac Anthony, also known as Anthony Nelson. So, do you want to tell people a little bit about yourself, like your little, a little bit of art background or anything? Um, well, I'm not sure there really is a whole lot to tell on there. I mean, most of it's uh, um, a lot of it is is uh, self. Taught, yeah. Uh, um, that I've done types of mediums, um, you know. So I play around with pretty much anything that interests me. I've done everything from uh, charcoals to to watercolors, gouache, digital, pretty much everything. Uh, I stick most. <laughs> Hello. So I did stop for a bit. Oh, there we go. Uh, Sorry, you cut out for a second there. Yeah, we lost oh. your audio for a second there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm very intrigued happy. by all the pens and the watercolors on your screen. I'm looking forward to what you make. Well, the pens are here just because it's my desk is a mess. <laughs> um, but yeah, the watercolors. I thought I was going to do something with with watercolors tonight, and there it was. It's kind of a tricky picture to. Yeah, that's what we've we've both been saying because we we picked it because we thought it would be a really good picture. We liked the the, or well, I I liked the angle and the the change with the flag and stuff. But once I started getting stuck into it, I found a lot of 
issues, not necessarily with the photo, but maybe with a slight blur that might be on the photo that it's making me struggle a little bit to get it accurate. I can't make any decisions on the features. Like I, every time I decide that's where that that works, and then I bump the contrast on one photo I'm working off. I print it out off the wall, and then I realize it made this his eye in the shadow incredibly difficult to line up and see. So then I have to go off the photo on the computer screen off the original photo. And yeah, this has been a real battle. I don't know. How, I don't know where this one's gonna go here. Mm. This well, one it's might stay in the same boat. Like yeah. At least. We're all feeling the same thing. <laughs> well, it was mine is because I had a few different uh, mediums that I could play around with to pick from on there. But this one was like, like not an obvious choice. You know, some of them you look at it, oh, I'll, I'll do that. And, you know, whatever medium. But this one was like, uh, I'm not sure exactly what I want to do with it. So, um, but watercolor is pretty easy for me, and it's uh, it's a can be a pretty quick medium since I'm playing catch up too so so did you learn with watercolor first no no uh, watercolor is is probably the, the is the most recent piece I've oh, been okay. doing watercolor for uh, let's see last it would have been October 2013 was like when I started doing it. Um, was the first watercolor picture. In have fact, been, I happen to have right now. Have you been drawing your whole life then? That was the first one I ever did. Oh yeah, but have you been like involved with art? Because you said you're self-taught, and usually, usually when someone's self-taught, they've been drawing basically since they could hold a pencil or something. Well, I, I mean, I did take some some schooling on there, and I had a lot of uh, uh, pretty informal mm -hmm. art classes. Uh, but I would I wouldn't say that I'm. I am uh, a student <laughs> of the arts. But, no, uh, you know, so yeah, yeah, but I've been drawing probably since you know I don't know since I was like five or something like that. You know? Yeah, I, I'm absolutely the same. I'm I've had a little bit of school in here and there from just I wouldn't call it real school. It's just like art class in school. But yeah, well, I've been I've absolutely been drawing ever since I could hold a pencil. Yeah, I mean I did take like a, a commercial art. I started out. Um, when I got out of high school on there, my first one was uh, taking a commercial art course on there, but after a year of that, I decided that really wasn't, wasn't okay. my bag, so. Uh, but I wouldn't really consider that, you know, like traditional art, uh, because it's more design-based. Uh, there's a lot of layout um, and things right, like that. Very composition-based, then. Yeah, and you know, it's and that was part of it. The reason you know that kind of turned me off from it is I thought it would be a little bit more. I knew it wasn't like fine art, you know, the fine art courses, but you know, I thought it would, there would be a little bit more um, of that. Anybody that were doing it, that you know, graduated, and, um, ended up making a career out of it on there. It, it it just really didn't seem to be something that fit me. So I kind of just kept art as a hobby and actually I kind of quit doing art for about 10 years where I didn't what? really I didn't do much of it um, and then about three years ago uh, is when I found Reddit Get Strong and a few other things uh, online on there and I started getting back into it quite a bit so but now I probably I draw way more than I ever did in all my art stuff you know painting or anything else like that I do way more now than I ever did before. So that's really cool. I love that you kind of discovered it again. That's really cool. Yeah, it was it was uh, something you know, family and things like that. A whole bunch of other stuff got in the way, but you know, ended up. Um, I would do things every now and then, like you know, about every two years, I would pick it up and I would do like a portrait for somebody that asked me to do it for it. But you know, it was. I was rusty, you know, from doing, you know, from not doing it for so long, and, and it just took me forever. And, you know, there was a whole bunch of stuff, so I don't mm -hmm. think I, I don't really count that as being a serious. Right, just like um, playing around every now and then. Yeah. That's cool. That's, so yeah, so it hasn't been until like the last three years that I really, really picked it up, and I've done a lot of other different stuff. 
Uh, that was the first time I ever did digital. Uh, it was a couple years ago. You know, like I said, I, I recently picked up watercolor. Um, how have you uh, have you found the transition from traditional into digital? Uh, well, I don't know that I can really say that I fully did it, you know, because I only did a few mm -hmm. few pictures of it, you know, saying um, for me to say that I really transitioned into it. Mm -hmm. you know, I probably spent like three months where I was doing uh, <laughs> digital work, and it was just so I liked it a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was certain parts of it that I just I liked the tactile. Feel of, of doing yeah, I traditional agree. art more. Yeah, you know, getting dirty, smelling the paint, and then all yeah. that on there. And I kind of just missed, missed all that. Um, yeah. Plus, it ended up being just easier just to take it with me to and go. You know, just with the sketchbook and the pen. Um, you know, so I still every now and then I every couple months on there I pick up my digital tablet and I mess around with it a little bit, but. Um, I haven't really taken a serious foray into the digital world yet. Yeah. I found it really hard to get into digital art. I really struggled with it because I all I knew... I mean, I made a lot of artwork on PowerPoint. That probably sounds really weird, but I'd essentially... <laughs> use, yeah. I'd essentially use the freeform tool as the pen tool that you get in, like, Illustrator and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd make artwork that way. But then when I got my tablet, I was so excited. I thought, oh, now I can finally draw properly. And I got a tablet and I got Photoshop. And then I found it so difficult because I could never work out how to create stuff. And I think I ended up walking away from digital art for several years. And it wasn't until about maybe two years ago-ish maybe two or three years ago where I got back into digital art and started to figure it out and learn it and now I actually really enjoy it. I think it's interesting to see some artists just walk into it and they just immediately they know everything they're doing and others just can't bear it. <laughs> I'm currently struggling through trying to learn digital. Yeah. What, well, what kind of the, things is it that, that kind of hold you back? Well you know when you're first learning, when someone's learning digital, every, the, the there's a look to it. It's like I think every kind of medium mm -hmm. has a look when someone's learning. With digital, everything looks very like transparenty, and then yeah. lines, like lines, and then there's no volume. And um, I feel like it's kind of that that same thing with uh, like like that that that's where it comes across. And with digital, it's hard because it's all about like knowing which button to push, you know. And yeah. um, and then, it, you know, so I found that for a long time, I didn't know that was just, like, there was the, uh, the button that would uh, make, it would affect opacity with the pressure. Yes. I didn't know that was even an option. And then it made this huge difference, and it's so funny, cause, like, and that's what it was so many times, is I'd be trying to work this thing, and I'd be like, I know there's a way to do this, but it's, it's all about knowing, like, which button to click. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. Um... Mm -hmm. I think that's why it's so helpful that there's just billions of, of like um, tutorials all over the internet. That's once they started getting big, that was when I could figure out what I was doing because I'd just sit there and watch tutorials and learn how to do it. Because I felt like it doesn't feel as intuitive as drawing in IRL feels like. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's you know. It, yeah, you know, and as I've kind of done it a little more, there's like the little things that kind of people have suggested, you know, don't try to focus on having too many layers when you're starting, you know, and, um, yeah, you know, things like that. I mean, that advice helped me, and then, you know, I had some pieces I had some okay success with, success with and I'm trying to, like, do the thing where maybe I start traditional, and then I scan, and then work on top, like, it just feels, it was hard because it felt very uh, removed from the piece, like, I'm not... And I'm, yes. I'm working on a tablet where it's it's the, I think the N2O's 4, so I'm, you know, it, I'm looking at the screen and drawing on a tablet, you know, on my lap or something. That's and it's, exactly what I've got right now. I'm working on an Intuos 3, uh, which is the one before that one. So I've got... I wonder if I actually have the 3. I'm, I'm not sure. I've had it for a while, but... Yeah, yeah, so I'm sitting here looking at the screen, but using my pen, and that's why... I think that's why I struggled for so long to get into it, because... 
I couldn't get my brain. It just felt like I was so far away from what I was drawing. Yeah, it, it's, it drove me crazy, and it, it yeah. still would, you know, and I, could, I just could not get used to that, and I just kind of hated that, that I'm, that I'm drawing on a surface, a different surface than the one I'm looking at, you know. Yeah. Um, and even if I, if I felt like even if I got used to it, it would still be that thing that kind of annoys me, you know. Yeah, it's um, still irritating, even after yeah. I've, I've gotten used to it now, but it still annoys me. Um, mm. But I, I, I mean, I said it last show, I, I had the opportunity of using a Cintiq, which is the one with the screen on the front, and yeah. oh my word, it is glorious. Because then <laughs> you've got you've got all of the um, functionality and the quickness that you have with digital, but yeah. all of a sudden you've got that connect with the artwork again. Like it doesn't yeah. feel so far away, it doesn't feel so... I guess sometimes it feels weirdly emotionless because you yeah. don't have that tactile like feedback with the paper I don't know if that makes sense to people yeah. well it would feel like you're almost wa even though you're the one making it it would feel like you're watching a drawing being yeah. made instead of making it yourself yeah um, but the the Cintiq is just gorgeous it really is well and the funny thing is is it, it gets to that point where you like eventually the standard will be the Cintiq and yeah. and the, the skill of looking at one screen and drawing on a different one that won't be, be a thing. It won't even. You won't. No one will have to learn it. Yeah, that'll you know be obsolete. Be, it'll be completely obsolete because you'll have the option for digital. That's the one, and then traditional, which is still the thing. So why would anybody do the other one? You know. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of funny that the prices are not dropping fast enough for those products. You know. Well, the thing is, they don't need to because one, there's there is a little bit of competition, but it's still very unknown, yeah. and then. So why why lower your prices if no one's there to compete with you? Yeah. And then two, they've basically got like market monopoly and most of their clients have a lot of money. So a lot of Wacom's clients aren't us. They aren't us sitting at home with our own little studios that we run and that we sort out. Most mm. of those clients are massive corporations that run like um, animation studios and game studios and stuff like that where mm. they can chill out thousands and thousands and thousands and buy ten Cintiqs for a studio room and that's mm. absolutely fine. So if you know that you've got that business to business sale, why bother decreasing your price? It isn't until it becomes way more mainstream and also way more competitive in that area that we'll start seeing price drops. It needs and to be like a funnel. It eventually will. I mean, it even will, though you, but it's you only to have time. like Microsoft Surface competing, kind of, mm -hmm. and there was the uh, mono price tried to do like. It a was cheap the mono product. price, yeah. I heard, I've heard good things about that actually. Yeah, and, and even if those products are only okay, it kind of puts them like on the radar, like, oh, okay, you know, this is, like, this is the way the tide's going. Mm -hmm. um, it will eventually get there. It's just. It's just gonna take yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah, and it's that thing where I'm, I'm I don't know, I, I just that that disconnect, like really, yeah. I I feel like I should get used to it, and then the other part of me is like, oh god, you <laughs> know, I don't know. There's also an element of not wanting to get used to it, I think, yeah. which can I I definitely had that, which I think made it harder for me to actually get used to it. But the fact that I didn't even want to, I was like, no, I'd rather sit there with a pen and paper. But now, now I can sit here and sketch on a computer, and I'm almost at the the level that I am on paper. Mm -hmm. But it's just from working on it every day. Yeah, I should just I should just sit through it and manage. Yeah, chat, chat's agreeing that the same disconnect they have is the kind of element where you're watching and not doing. Yeah, definitely. Damn you, Wacom, Wacom, Wacom. Is it Wacom or Wacom? I think it's Wacom. I've always heard Wacom. Yeah. Good to know. Back. Sorry about that. AFK much is mentioning also the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note has. Yeah, uh, I just saw that. It's good for that too, and that's also a good point. And even that's to a, a certain one. degree, what's the um, what's the app that's for phones and tablets that's actually pretty good? Was it like Sketchbook Mobile or something like that? And that was supposed to be a pretty decent one. Oh, I don't know. You know what I 
probably should do is when I'm learning digital is just try to spend some time just working on some, you know, just black and white, just some line work. And I was doing yeah. that a little, and it was starting to feel pretty comfortable again. That's how I got used to it. I basically sat there and just tried to render something black and white the way I normally would on a piece of paper, and I got a lot closer to how I felt happier. Do you, would you still prefer traditional or, di or digital? Definitely traditional. I think there's a need for digital in my work, and I can create things in digital that I can't create in real life just because I don't have the money to spend on the real tools like oils and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, absolutely, I prefer traditional because I, I I just I like the feeling, and you just don't get that with digital really. Um, I'm getting. I think once I have a Cintiq, that that might change. That answer might change. Mm -hmm. um, but until I get a Cintiq, then it's always going to be uh, traditional. Also, I love working with just like a ballpoint pen or something and just sketching. I love to just sit there and just sketch continuously. Just like with a very basic tool. Yeah, just like what? Because I used to sit in class all the time and just sketch with the pens that I was using for working on like my essays and whatever and just sometimes I just sit down and do that again I just pick up one of my old rubbish pens mm -hmm. and just sketch and enjoy it for a bit and I think that's just fun to do that sometimes I haven't sketched in ages oh dude sketch I don't, I don't know. Every time I sit down, I'm like, I should sketch and then I'm like, I'll just make a thing and they're like, I'll, it just turns into a project I never just... yeah draw anything. It's weird. I don't know why I don't sketch. It just kind of doesn't... I don't know. Interestingly, I don't like using sketchbooks because it makes me feel like I need to do something important. Like, I feel well, like the blank page yeah. in a book makes it feel more important and, like, I have to do something special. I prefer to work with, like, um, like a, a stack of papers and just doodle on them, and then throw a stack of paper in the recycling, and then work on the next one. That could, yeah, you just throw them away. See, for yeah. me, it was that thing where I stopped... I have a bunch of sketchbooks, and I kind of want to go back into them, but I stopped working in them for a while because I was in studios where you would could, where people were coming through each month or semi-regularly, and I'm like, they're always looking for cheap art, and I'm like, you know, if I just sketch and had little sketches for sale so I would start working just in tearing sheets of Bristol or something because then I could then I could just throw it in, I would I would tear sheets of Bristol to the size of like pre-made frames you could just buy cheap frames at stores you know yeah and, and then I would just could throw them in there and then try to just sell those for really cheap you know and that's so that's like cool. kind of what took me away from sketching though like there was always some kind of practicality that yeah that ruined that's it really and cool. I, do you know, and the, the the funny thing is, is you know what actually where I started to actually feel like I was sketching again was uh, using Snapchat, which is kind of hilarious. Really? But yeah, like doodling in Snapchat, like seeing how far I can push a drawing in Snapchat was felt like sketching again. Because then I could just send it to friends, and then it would just disappear. Like I, you know, and you could I could technically save it, but I like the idea of kind of not, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it was, I think it was that things have, having some format that forced me to reduce my materials. Uh, so I think it's a lot like the ballpoint pen thing, like something yeah. that just forces you to not to to not think too much about the resources. Yeah, and just run with it and see what happens. Yeah. Look at this in the window. Is this ready to? Yeah, let's throw ink on this. Who cares? Let's see what happens. <laughs> I've actually just suddenly decided to completely change what I'm doing. I was going to do a really painterly style, which I've been playing with, and then I've just decided that it doesn't suit what my, I guess, my vision for the piece is. I'm going to do something a lot more cartoony, kind of, now. But that's why I chat that I just got rid of everything that I just did. <laughs> that's the thing with the digital, though. You can get rid of everything and just bring it back later if you feel like you actually preferred it, or you can just, like, carry on. It's quite useful. Yeah, if I get rid of it, then I just stare people in the... I just scare people that are in the studio across from me when I'm yeah. smashing things on the ground. You know, the funny thing was, though, it wasn't always complete anger. Sometimes I had to smash things really small so I could fit them in the garbage. 
<laughs> so, you know, if you see me in there, and it's like, I, you know, throw it on the floor, okay, there's the anger. But then if I'm there just kind of, like, breaking the thing in half and tearing it apart, it's just, it's only because I had to fit it in the trash can. Yeah. So, you know. That's the thing, though. That's like a, a, a golden rule, isn't it? If you're going to put a box in the trash or the rubbish or the bin or whatever, you need to break it down. <laughs> Well, and isn't there the, I remember there's to like set a Guinness World Record for uh, demolishing, you know, like the what? fastest time to demolish a piano. There was some what? standard size. Yeah, there's this, there, they, they have records for that. And I think the way they measure it is there is some standard size, like they have a, a wall with a hole in it, like a 12-inch hole, right. and you have to fit every part of the of the object through that hole. And that's how they what? do it. Yeah. And that's, and that's, so, you know, I kind of see it like that. What I fit in the garbage? <laughs> my uh, my neighbor has the coolest little tool I've ever seen. It's like some kind of knife thing, but it just shreds boxes. It, you you just swipe at a box and it just disintegrates. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Whoa, that's crazy. Uh. I think we need a new link in the chat. Yeah, no, it's just, are you doing that right now? Or I can do it here. Yeah, there I don't go. think I can there, do it. I, I just set one in there. Thank you. So we had something else come up in rec like this week in uh, mm. Ice Lounge, which was about how do you find time to be, to work on your art? when you're so busy, like you've got family and kids and stuff. Now that's not something that I know, that I don't have any reference for that. So I was wondering if Mac Anthony might uh, have a little more knowledge for that. Yeah, I've got, uh, got the whole family thing going on in there. And it was, it was really tough, you know, for a while. And that was part of the reason why I took such a long break with it, is that it was just hard to well, I wouldn't. Okay, I shouldn't say it was hard to. It was <laughs> mostly an excuse not to get back into it. You know, because if you really want to do something, you're going to do something. Yeah. I mean, even if you have an obstacle in front of you, or no matter what that obstacle is, if it's kids, if it's family, if it's your job, if it's money, or whatever else, you know, whatever the obstacle is, it doesn't matter. You know, if it's something you really want to do, you'll try and find a way to to, to do it. And I think yeah. most of it was, is I just. I liked the idea of doing it, but I, I lacked enough motivation to really jump back into it yes. for a long time. Yeah. I, I hear that a lot from people at conventions. You can see that they love the thought of art, and they love the idea of being really great or it, or the idea of having their own comic book or something like that, like being on like my side of the table. But then they don't have, I guess either the drive or something that pushes them to go ahead and do that. Right. I, I think there's a difference between the energy you have at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. Like, I want to make art the most about 45 minutes after I clock in at work. And then mm -hmm. I, I cannot make art for, I can't even think about starting art for at least another nine hours. I'm the complete work. opposite. Oh, uh, uh, I uh, can't remember what it was, but I think it was uh, Big Think or one of those YouTube channels on there had something uh, that related very close to that on there, and it talked about how um, you know that your your body does not want to be bored on there. So when you're in, you need, but you need the boredom to uh, be motivated to create stuff. You need that that as the driving force on there. And so when you're mm -hmm. at work, that's what you are. You're bored. You know, so you think of all of this creative stuff that you can end up being doing. You know, and then once you actually get home, video. yeah. Well, it's hard though because you're exhausted too, and then so by you the time you're tired on there, but you know, you know, but you can. It's it's easy to find some stuff to not be bored. <laughs> yeah, and it just I guess I guess the weird thing because in my own struggle, it's 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 just it's just work, and then. I added on that I had my you know so I have the, it was always the day job and then after that we had our own gal I I needed a studio and to do that we made like a studio space with ten people in a gallery that we manage so then it was like work and then yeah. that 
and then at some point I'm supposed to eat food and go to uh, sleep yeah. and and then do everything else but it was I mean the, the time I got like genuinely like really depressed really really depressed is when I actually sat down and I added up how many hours I just spent it just jobs and and you know jobs a job you do a job you pay bills it's just a part of life but mm -hmm. it was just you know, uninspiring jobs. Work I knew for a fact I don't want to spend my life doing this. And I sat down, I added up, and it was 30,000 hours I had spent at that work. And my, like, six, this big six-foot painting I spent, it took me a year. If I did it full-time, it would have taken me, like, a month a month or so with okay. other things. But it was, like, a six-foot painting. That took me, like, 180 hours. And I spent... And that was a big achievement for me, but I've spent 30,000 hours at, like, jobs I could care less about, you know? Yeah. And, I just, and I, that was one of those moments where, like, you just sit down and, you're like, I'm, I need to just, like, sit outside and just kind of stare at the clouds for a minute, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. There's a, there's a famous phrase which I see pop up in, like, um, r slash get motivated and stuff like that all the time, and it's, it's that don't think about how long something's going to take to do because the time will pass anyway. And yeah. it's the idea that just because you're putting something off, because it's like, well, if I, I, I don't have time to do that, well, you'll never have time. That time will never come back, so you might as well yeah. start it now and see what happens. And maybe you only get a little bit of it done because you've got other, quote, more important things to do in your life. But mm -hmm. you will get there eventually, even if you have to do every job and <laughs> you've got kids. If, like, every... Little mo I, I was speaking about this recently on Reddit because someone was talking about, they said, how can someone at the age of 22 have two graphic novels out? They said, there's no way that you can possibly be good enough to be able to do that. And I said, it comes down to optimizing your day. You need to think about where are all the little bits of time, even if you don't have a choice, you have to go and do these jobs that you hate. But you have to think, where's the rubbishy little time that I waste when I'm just thinking about things? And, and the wonderful Monty Ohm, who we recently lost, he was famous for being able to do this. He figured out on his microwave the quickest combination to be able to get his food ready in mm -hmm. the movement of his hand. He could figure out the shortest amount of time it would take him to move his hand from the top left of the keyboard to the bottom right, carry on with his work, and jump back mm -hmm. and open it and be it be ready. Because he realized that every little second that he wasted was another little second where he wasn't getting his artwork done. So even if he had, even if you have a billion other jobs and you've got uh, your family to look after and you've got everything in the world weighing down on you, I'm sure there's still that five little minutes that is being wasted in your brain. Like, just from do, just from sitting there shutting down for a minute when it could be a tiny little sketch in a sketchbook or something. And that's what I did. I would walk between classes thinking about my next piece and I'm planning it and I'm looking around me and I'm examining stuff but I've got a place to be but I'm still thinking right I want to do this 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 and this I then right. sit down in class and I'm studying and studying as hard as I can but at the same time I've got a piece of paper next to me and I'm drawing every like moment where I need to think about the answer to the question I start drawing whilst I'm answering it in my head then I jump back um, I'd even have, I'd even ask my teachers for extra pieces of paper and they'd give it to me because they know that I'm doing the work fine, that I'm going to be sitting there drawing as well, but they don't mind because they know they can trust me because I've got this kind of weird optimization thing going on where I'm trying to make sure that I get everything done to the best of my ability and do be aware that that's going <laughs> to knock you out eventually, like don't yeah. overdo it. But, well, because, yeah, eventually yeah. You, know, you just work and, like, for me, the busy time to just work until I actually get physically sick. Like, yeah. I just get sick, and then I have to stay home from work. Absolutely, yeah. Like, don't drive yourself to the point where you can't, like, cope with life anymore. Like, absolutely don't do that. But if if you are... I think, I think if you have to do yeah. it, do it. I yeah. mean, that's horrible advice, but I think if you have to, you, you do it. I remember times in my life where I there was literally no choice. Like, my schedule was wake up at 5.30 a.m., mm -hmm. Get ready, go to work, get off work, try to go to the studio, paint for a couple hours, come home, try to eat food fast, and then I had a whole bunch of emails 
and business things to do from the studio in my own space, do that, and then sleep for maybe four hours and just see how long I can do that before I get until my body just can't take it anymore. And it's not the best way to do things, but I didn't really know how, what my other options were. You know, <laughs> like I didn't have, there was nothing in between. And then I got like, I just like put on a bunch of weight and that sucked. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a it was a bummer. There was just there's just the the hours did not match the goals, and then I realized it helped uh, if I made the when I made the conscious decision. This is kind of like weird to like admit on this, but I'm gonna say it. But I made the conscious decision that like I need to start being a a bad employee. Yeah. Like, I need to be a worse employee. That means I need to, if there's little emails I need to do for work, that means I need to just, like, go, pretend to go to the bathroom and sit on the toilet for 15 minutes and not even be, and just be, like, on my phone, like, writing, like, business emails. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, sneaking. The, when I first started, Reddit gets drawn, and me and another friend, we were, we were secretly doing them at work. <laughs> like in the morning and like that's fucked up to say but it was it was true and it's like yeah but it's gonna ha I mean it's just that's when it had to happen you know so yeah. it's, for larger projects it doesn't work but it was at least something yeah it's but little it, things that keep that art in your life and I think a lot of people think that if if you're gonna try and keep if you, you're gonna be an artist you have to be the kind of artist who makes enormous artwork and stuff like that but just drawing like a tiny doodle every day is good enough for you to keep that little bit of art in your life and keep moving forward with it and the more you fall in love with it the more and and your life changes in whatever way whether that's a really short amount of time all of a sudden you change do jobs or maybe it's a very long period of time where kids grow up and then they're able to um, be more independent themselves, then you can bring back that time that maybe you didn't have before. But as long as you've got that little itty bitty little drawing that you're doing every day, at least it's something to keep that part of your brain alive and yeah. Uh, the I'll art will be there. Important. I mean you'll still be dying inside if your goal <laughs> in life is to be an artist like, and that's yes. all you're getting done. You'll be dying inside um, yeah. for sure. But at least you still have it in there. I mean, I think when it comes, you have to just. I mean, I the, the if there's one thing it feels like I learned. Like my my goal in life is like I want to I want to make art and live off the art. I want it like that's uh -huh. the only, yeah. that's the only thing as far as work goes. It's the only thing that means anything to me. It's like if I'm in a job and I'm not making art, you can look at me and no matter what I say, if I am if I'm saying if if I'm not saying that I would rather be making art than doing whatever the job is, I'm lying to you. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's just a fact, you know, and it's fine. But at the same time, though I, I said the thing about, you know, being a bad employee, I mean, at the same time, I'm still going to, like, do what I'm getting paid to do. Like, uh -huh, do this thing, yeah. okay, I will do that. That's part of the deal. I have a bill I have to pay, so I'm going to do this thing, Absolutely. and I'm just going to be like, cool, and do it and get along. Um, but it's all in my bones and in my blood. It's like I am completely... I could not. I could care less. You know? yeah. <laughs> like I don't. I don't care what any of this is. There was a brilliant article. Uh, you know the Onion. Um, yeah. There was this article that was. Um, oh my God! It was so. It was so amazing. <laughs> I should really just take a second to try to find it and maybe and maybe read read part of it because I think it laid yeah. it out better than anything else. Give me. Give me one minute here. Yeah. No, uh, that's fine. I think talking about this subject I'm very privileged because I've started early and I've started in the industry early like I haven't just been drawing early I'm in the industry working in it early so I'm lucky enough to not have had a quote real job I've had experience in real jobs but I haven't actually worked as an employee in a quote real job like standing behind a till or something and I'm also lucky enough to be doing this before I have any major responsibilities so uh, I'm very interested in hearing other points of view because I think I can be a bit uh, clouded in viewpoints so yeah I'm, I'm yeah I would just say I'm like to me personally for where I am right now how I feel like with with art I think literally the only hurdles in my life with art are time and money affected mm -hmm. by ha just having to work. Yeah. Like I, I know right now I'm making paintings I would have made ten years ago 
if it wasn't for that time that's lost. And it's not a healthy way to look at art. Like, cause you just no. the best way to look at it is just do it in the moment. But yeah. every now and then, like you know, you you'll get in bed and it's you're just in the darkness and you're there with your thoughts and you're just like, oh my god, <laughs> you know. And it's it's a it's a horrendous way to look at the world. But it, you know, it is it is pretty much like living this that constant state of, you know, like I should have asked her out or. You know, mm -hmm. like, I yeah. should have done, you know, it's, it's a whole bunch of, like, could have, should have. It's so not and healthy. <laughs> and it's so, it, it's not productive at all. The best thing you can do is just make art anyways. The yeah. only the thing that gets me through it, like, is, is the idea that it's, you're going to make art anyways, so yeah. just make art. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your circumstances or what the scenario or how little when the time. you make it either. And just make it the thing you want to make. It, it Like, you can't, you can't think about, you can't think about, like, because lots of those goals are also, they're not, they're not, they weren't created in an environment that took your life into consideration, whatever your circumstances might be. Yeah. So the best thing to do is, like, whatever your circumstances, like, just still make make art. It, you yeah. know, because that's all you can do. And it's, and it actually is good enough. Because it's another yeah. situation, the grass is always greener, you know. Like, right now I could be like, oh, it's so frustrating, all these hours I lose to work. Like, that's a thing in my head, it's a stress. It's a thing I think or worry about, and... A thing I work on about myself, uh, but the fact of the matter is, is the blessing I have is I can draw whatever I want right now. There's yeah. no ex no one has an expectation to me. I could draw like a I could draw a gigantic dick right on this guy's face. <laughs> there are zero consequences. There's yeah. zero consequences. Yeah. I can rip the drawing in half. I can throw it away, and I, I don't have to do anything for anybody right now. And yeah. um, that's pretty cool. You that know, eventually is, that's a big. Yeah, yeah, it's a big privilege to be able to do that. If I find success in art, I will I I will not have as much freedom in that area. There'll be projects yeah. I'll need to do, and but I'll be I'll be trading that freedom. I can draw whatever I want, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's offensive or weird or if people don't get it or if it's just personal. Like it it doesn't matter. And so I'm trying to remember that for every side there's the other side, and it's to find those yeah. things well. I'm not in that. I'm not in the, the situation that I'd like to be in. Maybe I'm a little tired of the situation I'm in now, but why not take a step back and look at the benefits of it, and then just focus on those. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Preach it. <laughs> this onion article was actually. I read it, and I had to just like not do anything for the rest of the day, though, because. Oh no. It's so. It, this is the best summary. And written in that perfect satire style. I don't even know if it's okay to just like read an Onion article. I'll just read some of it. But uh, it was written by David Ferguson. It's called, Find the thing you're most passionate about, then do it on nights and weekends for the rest of your life. Yes, uh, I read this. <laughs> I have always been a big proponent of following your heart and doing exactly what you want to do. It sounds so simple, right? But there are people who spend years, decades even, trying to find a true sense of purpose for themselves. My advice, just find the thing you enjoy doing more than anything else, your one true passion, and do it for the rest of your life on nights and weekends when you're exhausted and cranky and just want to go to bed. It could be anything, music, writing, drawing, acting, teaching. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that once you know what you want to do, you dive in a full 10% and spend the other 90 torturing yourself because you know damn well that it's far too late to make a drastic career change and that you're stuck in this mind-numbing path for the rest of your life. Is there any other way to live? I can't stress this enough. Do what you love in between work commitments and family commitments and commitments that tend to pop up and take immediate precedence over doing the thing you love because the bottom line is that life is short and you owe it to yourself to spend the majority of it giving yourself wholly and completely to something you absolutely hate and 20 minutes here or there doing what you feel like you were put on this earth to do. Oh, God. Oh, God. It just goes... I don't know if it's like right to read a whole like thing another person. No, we should or probably not, leave so it there. Can't do that. It's some kind of. But yeah, yeah, copyright. exactly. But that's um, it goes on like that, and it just gets more and more brilliant. And I think um, I mean obviously yeah. the Onion is satire. Everyone yeah. knows that. Um, not everybody. That's true. There's a, there's, when there's a subreddit called Not the Onion, it's just like, yeah. like news has gotten that ridiculous, where sometimes it's hard to. Find the line between them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but something I, something the the article said was that it, it's too late to do a career change, and that I want to give people a little bit of hope with that. So I watched a documentary last night. Well, it wasn't a documentary. It was kind of like X Factor, but for artists. It was very strange. 
Anyway, so <laughs> uh, they were they went and talked to the granddaughter of Winston Churchill, um, and they went to his art studio. He had like he lived in a glorious castle, and uh, in one of the rooms he had a little art studio, and in it were just some of the most beautiful paintings, just absolutely gorgeous. I believe they were either acrylic or oil, one of the two, um, and paintings of London and the surrounding areas, and just absolutely gorgeous. And then when they started speaking, they said that um, Winston Churchill actually started painting at the age of 40. He hadn't painted before that. I think mm. he might have dabbled in it slightly, but he started at the age of 40. Um, and he basically used it as an escape from the fact that he was dealing with a level of depression brought on by some uh, events surrounding the war. Um, and he ended up uh, using it, like he discovered it and it saved him, essentially. Mm. And to see someone who can start something where everyone says you have to be talented and you have to have worked for years and years and years and start it at such a essentially late point in their life and then get that good and he would um, he would send it to galleries but he'd never put his name on it he'd never let anyone know that it was him and yet he was accepted into galleries yeah. all, all around the UK and I think it's looking at people like that people who succeeded late in life and prove that you can get over whatever you're dealing with right now and still succeed later on I, th I think that's really inspiring. I think th there in there's a um, kind of I th there's this push with the way people look at art and everything. Everyone's obsessed with the idea of like a prodigy, you yes. know. And so when you see news, it's always look at what this twelve year old can do, this or that. Yes. And you always, if you research too much, you'll always feel like, oh my god, like I'm. It'll never happen. I, I it's never happened to me. <laughs> but there's a lot of artists that got a late start. Someone had asked that question in the artist lounge recently, and you know we we're listing out a bunch of artists that got the late start or started late, and and the, I. Th think like a lot of that idea that it's too late was something that was kind of just reinforced by media because media, it's yeah. an interesting story and it's not it's not accurate everybody has something to say you know you learn life lessons at every stage in your life you know um, and I always hated that idea especially with art something as subjective as art like the idea of the prodigy child mm -hmm. and everyone they talk about Picasso and this and that and here's the thing is yeah, Picasso, he made great paintings when he was only in high school and whatnot, but millions, literally millions of other people have to, you know? And they would say, well, they didn't make Picasso's pieces when, when he did, but it's like, well, neither did he. Like, if you look at his, his high yeah. school stuff, it's traditional art or whatever, and it was good. Millions of other people have done it since, and it was traditional. And You know what I mean? And yeah. We, we, we build these people up where they're... They're they're like they're not even human anymore. I, I work in a gallery that is that I've worked at galleries that have had Picasso pieces. You know, they've had the prints and his things he did in the later years. He did brilliant oil paintings, and he's also done the dumbest prints, the <laughs> dumbest sculptures. He's he has so many stupid drawings. Like he's just a, he, he's a person too. And yeah. then every artist has this. I think I dream that one day a museum will do an art show of the worst art by the by masters. <gasps> yes! Can we make that a thing? <laughs> I would... Oh, I would love it. The two art shows I would love to see the most in, a museum, in museums is the worst art by masters and the uh, and a show where you have a very limited... You invite a certain group of top artists. You have a very limited budget. Like, you give them a budget of, you know, $150 or $200. Mm -hmm. And then they have to make all the art them by themselves, no help, and on a fixed budget. And then let's see what the artist can do, like just things that would kind of like set it, make a set of rules that levels it back to that very basic idea of just what making something was, you know? Yeah. Because everything in everything museums and to became remind is, people that they are human beings. Yeah. I yeah. think the art would be fantastic. I think it would be so fun to look at. And I don't think it'd be this thing where 
because you're trying to trap someone, like, ooh, you're no, not yeah. as good as we thought. It'd just be that thing where it would suddenly start feeling so human again because you don't have entire, almost, production companies behind the work, you know? Um, I, it, it, art has spent a lot of time pushing itself away, separating itself from some kind of general public when it should have been doing the exact opposite. It should have been making people feel like, instead of making people feel like, that this is a masterpiece, they would never understand how something like that could happen. It should be making people feel like they can do it too. Yes. You should be encouraging more people to make art, not trying Absolutely. to make your, make it feel like that everything's above them, you know? Yeah, I saw a thing recently that was basically saying that artists are kind of seen as these wizards. And even when I was drawing earlier, my mum was saying, mysticism, mysticism, when I was colouring something in. <laughs> and it's like... Or she was saying, like, alchemy and stuff like that. And there is this kind of weird um, element of art where artists are seen as these magical creatures who conjure up beautiful artworks from the nothingness of the air, and it could never be understood. <laughs> and it has to be brought... Like, I love that there is that ethereal feeling of it, but there also needs to be an element of making sure that people aren't looking at artwork and saying, well, I would never be that good, therefore I will never try. There needs to be a place where you can go and see the work that goes in and how much these artists have trained and how much these artists have tried and worked and all the failures that they've made to get that one piece that they like. I think that's important for especially young artists, I say young artists, I don't mean young in age, I mean young in career. Young mm. artists who look at the ones they look up to and just see these gorgeous artworks, and they're like, I'll never be that good, not in a million years. But they need to realise, yes, you absolutely can be, because it is a skill. It will be different, the way you create it, and the way you look at it, and the way you the vision that you get will be different for every artist because it's based on their life and the way they see the world but yeah. creating artwork is a skill that you can learn it's the same as learning to play the guitar you may never become Va Van Halen or Slash yeah. or something but you can play the guitar right so yeah. yeah I think there definitely does need to be some kind of avenue or something for that like some kind of like sketchbook type exhibition or something along yeah. those lines where you can see the work and the mistakes and the rubbings out and all of that. Yeah, because yeah. lots, lots of artists you see their failures, it's, they're glorious. Yeah, yeah. I, have to even, I, want to take a, I haven't even taken a moment to like look at everyone's work here. The, um, oh, I'm just messing around with like pain at the moment. How's yours feeling, Mac? Uh, it's getting there. Kind of, being, so, kind of loose with it. Do you do a lot of preliminary with the pencil when you work in watercolor? I almost always sketch, yes. I don't hardly ever go straight to paint. But, I mean, do you, how, how, how much do you sketch in? Because when I do the pen and ink, there's that thing, there's that moment like, am I ready to go to ink yet, or do I, should I work the pencil a little more? I mean, if it was ballpark, uh, I could probably dive straight in, but otherwise. Like, how is it for you with watercolor? Uh, not not as much as I would if I was doing an ink. You know, in ink, I want it pretty pretty crisp. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of depends on the, the type of picture that I'm doing. You know, this one I'm trying to keep it kind of loose, and, you know, kind of not too... Um, uh, too realistic. You know, kind of have some abstract mm -hmm. elements of it. And so that kind of... You know, that, too. The more realistic, you know, and the more, you know, perfect that I want it to be, the more time to spend on the sketch. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of depends on that. But I, I really like the loose feeling, at least. But not everybody does. So, you know, it's like when I do commissions and things like that. Well, I it doesn't matter what other people like, does it? <laughs> it's your artwork. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. You know, if they are... You know, yeah. They're, they're putting the bill for it, you know, then, then they give it to mm -hmm. the offer. Um, but, yeah, as far as me, and actually, I think it, it depends on, you know, if it's if it's your Uncle Joe or whatever, you know, and you're trying to get a picture of him on there, you know, they most people do want to have it look, you know, kind of like a photograph, which I don't really, you know, it, it's great that people want it. I don't 
get that art so much, yeah. or I have an appreciation for it. I have, yeah. I have a great deal of appreciation for the amount of technical skill that goes into it. Yeah. Uh, but to me, then you know, if it looks just like a photograph on there, well, you know, then I appreciate it at the same level I would as a photograph. It just it has the same thing. Oh. What? You okay. Shit. Did you just drop I opened my marker and then like a bunch of water ink shot all over the place. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's okay. No. It's all good. All good. I, carry I, mean, on. I think a little bit might have gotten in my wine and all my cookie, but I'm going to still eat them. I don't, think I don't think it's enough to technically be poison. Ah, uh, it's a spots here. I always used to get told I'd get ink poison in. In school, everyone would say you're gonna get in poisoning and die that way. Cause I'd draw on my hands. Uh, what you do I'd... is you just yell, "I'll never die!" <laughs> no, I'd run out of paper. I'd be sitting there and I'd run out of paper because I'd I'd fill it all up with drawings. So then I'd just start drawing up my arm. I'd just like do little. Um, like anyone who knows Naruto, there's like a, a character called Sasuke and he gets these weird patterns up his arms. I'd draw stuff like that and like little weird like hieroglyphs and stuff and draw the contours of my arm and I'd just get an arm just covered like up to almost up to my shoulder in just ink and people are like you're gonna die. <laughs> I think I'll be fine. <laughs> I remember one time I get bored in class and I draw watches on my wrist. Like different watches. <laughs> wow, and, uh, that's brilliant. And then and then uh, <laughs> my I remember my dad giving me the oh that's bad for your thing and I'm like whatever what do you know, old man? But, uh, yeah. Did you ever, like, you know, put the time in so, like, the class was over and then go in and tell the teacher? You, didn't, oh, well, I, you know what? <laughs> I don't think they'd believe me. I think they would call, I think they would call my bluff. Um, maybe. I don't know. I just, never know. Well, it is the public education system, so maybe it would work. <laughs> in, in a US, the United States is known for its top-of-the-line public Education oh, absolutely. system. Absolutely. That and our healthcare. That's what we're known best for. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I it was like I just that's just kind of was my school time killer. That and then doing a thing where you draw the spiral and you just keep expanding it, but see like how close you can get the lines to each other without uh, without them touching. Well, I never did that. Oh, that's a fun one. You should. I, you're the one that would draw the Pokemon. Characters from different angles. I'm surprised you didn't try like the spiral. I want to try the spiral. Game. I'm gonna try it now. So you have to get <laughs> it as close. Oh crap! I missed. Yeah, just keep expanding it out, but try not to get the lines as but close don't as touch you can. I'm touching. Oh, it yeah, it's really stressful, and it's a really good way to make sure you're not paying attention in school. <laughs> no, you made me laugh and wiggle the line. I ruined the line for you. That's how, that's how exciting high school distractions. I had a friend. I had a friend's little brother. He worked like in the journalism in, in his high school, you know, and he did like he had to. He, for some reason, he had to interview someone from another, a senior from another school, like that had just graduated. And like, what were your, some of your regrets that you wish you did in high school? And I told him, and he put it in his school paper. The first thing I wish I did is I wish I stole more from my school. Because there was a bunch of art supplies I could have used that I could not have myself. <laughs> and then the other piece of advice I said was, uh, I wish I did not try as hard. And, <laughs> and then I had to justify it. But the idea being that I spent so much time trying to be a good student that I didn't really have, like, what I remember from high school was, like, the good times with my friends and I wasted so much time trying to be a good student. And I, that sounds messed up, like you should be a good student, obviously. Yeah, I don't. But um, I realized that where I kind of ended up going in my path, I could have done with like a C average and gotten way more art done. <laughs> which, which is, this is, this is horrendous advice, but it's like kind of true. Like if you're, if you want to be an artist, like focused on your art, you know, like I... I didn't like. I didn't. You end do up realize with you can do. You can focus on your art and get good grades. I walked out with like. If, if you're really smart, <laughs> I have friends. I'm not that are, really start smart, and I walked out with like A stars. I I have friends who were really smart. I was just visiting uh, friends in LA, way smarter than me, and um, 
they could probably do it. I was the friend that, like, all my friends would go to school and they'd be like, I didn't really study for this test, and then they'd get yeah. a good grade. And then I'd be like, I didn't really study either, and I'd get, like, a C, B minus. Like, yeah. All right. Like, I, I got through school with okay grades, but I could have had such a better portfolio if I really took more time doing that. But, you know, I don't – that's probably not good advice. That's probably what bad <laughs> advice sounds People don't like. don't listen to him. <laughs> Because I'm also the person that's like, if like someone's like starts like skateboarding and they, you know, and they're like, and I'm, I'm just kind of like, oh, you're wearing a helmet, huh? All right. <laughs> you know, like, I give a lot of bad advice to people, and uh, that's probably bad advice, but I'm not sure it's bad advice for me. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> there's a there's a question in chat. How is the cookie doing? So good. It's you know, <laughs> it's it's not even like a quality cookie. I just got it from a cheap pizza place, and it's still like it's just exactly what I needed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want a cookie in my life. I actually really fancy a cookie now. Yeah, I thought ahead. So okay, American British thing going on now. <laughs> you guys call all biscuits cookies, right? Mm -hmm. That's no. really strange. Well, I mean, we have we have biscuits too. Yeah, they're just different. They're like they're they're kind of bread, and they're flaky and with layers. Your your weird. What, I wonder what your weird. biscuits. What are your biscuits? Biscuits is you probably call them potatoes or something. You're a potato. Biscuits. <laughs> biscuits are all things like cookies. Anything that is essentially a cookie type thing is a biscuit. What about crackers? Crackers. Yeah, what are, do you guys... Crackers, crackers are just crackers. Like? Crackers as in the little things that you, like, snap and that you put, like, cheese and stuff on them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're just crackers. So biscuits are mm. things like, um... Like a Kit Kat has biscuit in it. Mm-hmm. Um, we call that cookie... That's our cookie crunch we refer yeah, to. Yeah, right. So okay. literally... One of Kit Kat's a wafer, but yeah. Yeah, that is a wafer and a Kit Kat, but, you know. Well, wafers wafer are biscuits cookies. as well. Well, it's still called a wafer cookie. <laughs> you know what, though? Usually, usually the, uh, the the British term is way more adorable than the American term, but I think I think is cookie is kind of a cuter word than biscuit. Is, I think well, we're the one thing on is, that we, one. We have the overarching, they're all biscuits, and then we call each one inside that its thing. Yeah. So if you want to say, I'm going to go get biscuits, that could be anything. You could want to go get, like... Uh, little cookies, or you might want to go get like heroin or anything. But then, pretty sure heroin said. Uh, is heroin also a biscuit? <laughs> yes, heroin is oh a biscuit. Oh my god! Also, it's an instrument, Patrick. Oh my god! <laughs> Sounds so confusing. Well, well, okay. Here, here's how you determine which word's better. There's two cats. All right. One's a biscuit. One cat's name is Biscuit. One cat's name is Cookie. Which cat is more adorable? Yeah, Cookie's cute. Yeah, yeah, right. Cookie's a kitty, right? Biscuit is kind of like Biscuit's pretty cute because it's like the bigger fat cat with the longer hair and the bigger whiskers. But Cookie's like the cat that will like be in the room and then suddenly like freak out on its back for a second and then run around in circles really fast and I then fall asleep. I have a cat that does that. Yeah, yeah, that's Cookie. My cat that does that is called Cosmo. And he's oh, that's a, nutter. a cute name. Yeah. You never guessed all our cats' names. Yeah, we got Wait, Cosmo. How many did I, how many, what did I guess the cats' names? You didn't guess any of them. You said bullshit answers. <laughs> I thought I gave real answers. That doesn't sound like me. That doesn't sound like me. I, I think I would have given a very realistic answer. <laughs> it doesn't no. sound like my style at all. No, we got Cosmo and Comet. They're brothers. And then we got Jasper, which is mine. That is a great cat name. What, Jasper? Yeah. Yeah. Also a good dog name, too. Yeah, it's a good dog name. Everyone says it's a good dog name, but he looks like the stone Jasper. Geology talking. Mm -hmm. So that's why I named him that, because I had a little stone, a little Jasper stone, and he looked just mm -hmm. like it. So. That was a... Uh, that's also a good grandpa name. But not a good name when you're young. That name only works if you're old. So you have to be born a grandpa for that to work. <laughs> That's why wasn't after we... I'm sorry, you were saying? No, I was just going to say something stupid. I was going to say, wasn't there a Jasper in um, 101 Dalmatians, I think? Jasper and Horace. Those were the two yeah. thief guys. I was just thinking about that movie literally today. <laughs> I 
I swear to God, I was just thinking. Now about, you're thinking about it again. <laughs> that's so weird. No, like, well, how often do you think about that? I don't think about the movie very often. It's a no, good movie. I, but I think I think about it only, you but know, I think every about other it. day. I did no. think about it the other day though, because someone posted a picture from it on Troll X. Maybe that's mm-hmm. why you're thinking about it. Oh, probably. Because someone said this is what life should be, or something like that, and then it was a picture of the uh, the lady reading a book next to her Dalmatian. Oh my God, that sounds that's that is that's exactly what life should be. <laughs> that mo- that movie actually had I really loved the the drawing style in that movie, and yes. even as a kid when I saw it in, I saw it in the theater as a kid and it was like that was a great movie man that movie was intense it was hard to handle as a little <laughs> kid because you're you're sitting there. Hoping that they don't skin a hundred puppies. Yes. The, oh my god. That's the presence of the. That's what the movie's about. So these puppies are like trying to sneak through a room through like a hole in the wall to get away from someone who wants to skin a bunch of puppies. And yes. so that's a lot to handle when you're like eight years old. That's a lot. And then like the show's coming to an end and the guy starts waking up and there's still like the fat puppy that can't get through the wall and you're like that's really that cute. little puppy. You're gonna die. You're so <laughs> cute but you're gonna die. Like you can't handle that. With his little you. wiggly legs. I love yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. And you're you're rooting for the dog to not get murdered. It's not like they're trying to win a cooking contest or something. You're rooting for all the main characters to not be murdered. Don't die little so puppy. That was so much for a kid. And it's puppies. It's it's puppies. I, I I can't think of like what would be harder, like maybe like baby sea otters or something. Like what would you know? Like, <laughs> especially the fat one, Rolly. Oh my god! I mean, he was the one like he was the one that like wouldn't fit in the hole in the wall or whatever. But the part where he goes, uh, where he looks back at the mom and just goes, "I'm hungry, mother. I really am." Like that second, like he had to think about it. Oh my god, that movie's awesome. <laughs> we should just stop drawing and just start watching that movie on the cast until Google eventually disconnects it for copyright. No, I don't <laughs> want a flag on my stream, dude. If we right, so I know we were talking about possibly doing theme music or something like that, which would be really cool. But we need to figure out if Google will boot us. But the thing is, I'm too scared of trying to find out. Because mm-hmm. if you get a copyright strike on your channel, mm-hmm. you can never stream again. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm too afraid to try it out and find out. I've gotten booted on a Hangout once already, a while back. I had music playing on my computer in the room, and I wasn't paying right. attention. And then it warned me, and I was like, huh? And then by the time I noticed, I tried to stop it, but it still booted my thing. No. But it was yeah, really yeah, I'm pretty sure it warns you first. Okay. I think since it, they were still starting the Hangouts on air, maybe they didn't boot me for good because I was, you know, I'm sure they had a lot of people make that mistake. And they have no one to use it. They've got to keep the, like, five people using it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, when, it use, when it works properly and the chat works properly, it's... Uh, oh, yeah, when everything works wonderfully. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> and when I don't press the wrong button and close the stream. Maybe when that doesn't happen... <laughs> <laughs> That's not what happened. It went fine. It did. It went wonderful. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. It was fine. That didn't happen. Edit it, was, it was Google. Google was being silly. You know how many mistakes Google makes. <laughs> I feel like Google would say it makes no mistakes. <laughs> it would tell us to say that when we Googled it. Absolutely. How are you guys doing with your drawings? It's going all right, I guess. Yeah. How's yours feeling? I feel like I'm starting to get into it now. Although I'm doing something weird with it, but oh well, life moves on. <laughs> yeah, it'll be all right. How about you, Anthony? How's yours going, Anthony? I think the guy's going all right on there. I don't really care for the background, but I might just mm. end up destroying the background. Destroy. Destruction. Getting the point, I might have to grab a smaller brush. And a cookie. I don't have any cookies. Stop talking about cookies. I want one so bad. I don't want a puppy now. <laughs> get one for get one for the neck. Get one for next week. What a puppy? <laughs> well, yeah, please, please get a puppy for next week. A puppy named Cookie. Oh my God. Yes. 
Oh, I want a little like chocolate Labrador called Cookie. <laughs> oh, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right think now, right now, family. right now, everybody in your home just went, oh, God. I think all the cats just worried. <laughs> Three cats just instantly just like, oh, God, no. They all just woke up and then did that thing where they, like, sit up straight a little bit and look around. They're all sitting opposite, actually. Opposite me, actually. They're all curled up, but they've all got their little ears poking out listening to me. It's kind of weird. It's weird living with more than one pet. Because it feels like you're always being watched. <laughs> I believe that. I never had I never had a pet. Well, not like a cat or a dog. I had a hamster. But hamster didn't really watch me. I had <laughs> 23 had gerbils head. once. At once? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there was a thing as a gerbil lady. But apparently <laughs> you were a gerbil lady at so some point. So, we got happened? <laughs> It's basic biology. Were you making a gerbil coat? <laughs> yes. It's the new 101 gerbil. <laughs> so, people would be sympathetic. Yeah. 101, so, you might get mittens out of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no, they are vicious creatures. No, we had two gerbils, and we were told that they were both girls, and they were not. We went on holiday... And we mm -hmm. came back, and um, on our way back, the lady who was looking after the pets, she rang us frantically, saying that there was some kind of weird infestation in the gerbil tank. And we freaked out, and we were like, what does it look like? And they said, well, there's a whole bunch of tiny little pink blobs in the tank. And that's when we realized that one of our gerbils had had a child, like had like ridiculous amounts of children whilst we'd been gone. So we ended up looking after 23 gerbils. That was not Did you fun. all of them? Did you keep all of them? I don't, we didn't keep all of them. We like slowly, once they were old enough, we started slowly giving them to people who we trusted. Um, and that, like, close friends who we could visit and check they were all okay and stuff and help them with, like, finding tanks and stuff. But we did have um, a shed where one of the entire walls was just gerbil tanks. It was it was a thing. It was a thing that happened. The further you're going into the story, it's almost like a more confused and kind of blown away I'm getting. <laughs> It started off with just like, oh, it was 23 gerbils. I'm like, that's weird. Someone's watching them. And then they gave birth to gerbils, and no one knew what these weird forms were. It sounds more like a Gremlins movie than, <laughs> than a gerbil like story. It sounds like a horror movie, doesn't it? Or uh, what, was the, what were the furry ball things in like the Twilight Zone? Tribbles? Is that what those were? Tribbles are I from Star was, Trek. Yeah, Star Trek. Oh, was that Star Trek? See, that shows how much I watched Star Trek. I thought that was a Twilight Zone thing. I've got a Tribbles, Tribbles board game. Is it just your gerbils on a piece of cardboard? No, we don't have gerbils anymore. We've got three cats. <laughs> ah. <laughs> one way of getting rid of the gerbils. Yeah, no, that was a plan. No, we didn't do that. No one <laughs> bring, like, some company and get me attacked. No, we didn't do that. <laughs> we we built, like, um assault courses for them. We built, you could get these little tubes that like stuck together and we'd make them come out of the tanks and then go all the way around and then go back into the tanks and they'd run all the way through them. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just, the, the further the story goes, the more interesting it gets. <laughs> You're welcome. There's your gerbil story. I had a friend who had gerbils, and she I think there was three of them, and she put, like, three little, like, kind of yogurty pellet things they would eat in the tank in the center, and then they'd each go take their own little pellet and then go to their own little individual corner and just kind of eat them there. And oh, that's like, pretty oh, cute. So adorable and weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but it's kind of cute. <laughs> 23. And I like how it's, like, it, it wasn't... The immediate thought that was in the family was, it's like, well, I guess we just, uh... I guess we start a gerbil farm. Well, the <laughs> thing is... <laughs> this is exactly how 101 Dalmatians ended, too. You actually had a 101 Dalmatians thing happen to your family. Yeah. Because they were going to have the Dalmatian plantation, and you had a gerbil... There's not a word that You're rhymes. You're trying to find a word that rhymes. There isn't a one. A gerbil farmerable. Yes, a farmable. 
A gerbil farmable. Well, you could have farmable gerbil. I think that makes sense. I suppose. Probably not. <laughs> American public education system. I wouldn't trust any words I'm saying. <laughs> And this is from a guy who tries to, whose advice is to not try as hard in school. So I really would not, I take everything I yeah. say with a grain of salt. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm glad I told this, the gerbil story. I hope chat enjoyed the gerbil story. Oh my god. AFK has a chihuahua. That's kind of like a gerbil. It's very big in comparison to a gerbil. That's true. Mm -hmm. Gerbils are kind of like mean hamsters. Yeah, well, no. I, I don't know. I had a really... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and then you were like, don't talk shit about gerbils. <laughs> I had a hamster called Cookie. What? How did you not circle. think about that when we were talking about it? <laughs> We've gone full circle. I had a hamster called Cookie. And he was My hamster's dead. name was Hammy. Was it one of the beige ones? Because the beige ones are mean. Uh, he was one of the like um, he he was a the Syrian hamsters, aren't they? The the brown and white patches, like oh. a one of them Jersey cow type ones. I thought those were supposed to be nice. Yeah, I thought they were supposed to be nice, but he no, he was mean to me. My <laughs> hamster was kind of a dick too. And I just figured it's because it was one of the beige ones, and someone else I knew had one of those too, and they're like really hyperactive. I think I needed to get to make it fatter somehow. I think that would have helped make it kind of lazy. I like how hamsters walk around with stuff in their cheeks. I think that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I remember when I got mine as a kid and I didn't really know that. I thought it was the weirdest looking thing ever. <laughs> have you seen, oh my god, have you seen the video of the guy who uh, lays a, tab a tiny little table and makes burritos for hamsters? Yes. Yes. Isn't that the best thing ever? <laughs> Well, it covers all the bases, really. Burritos and hamsters. I think it's. I think it's got to be like winner of some internet thing. Best video <laughs> on the internet ever. Or at least best idea ever. <laughs> We've gone on an odd tangent. <laughs> no, I think this is pretty much. This pretty much sums everything up. This, this is, is standard, right? Ours. God, man, Max, you're. Anthony's piece is moving so fast. He came in halfway, and he's just blowing right past the progress. Good lord, that was looking really nice. That's why it's a quick. That's why I said it was a quick medium. So that's usually something I can play catch up. You planned out. You know what you're doing. You planned ahead. Uh, originally, I wanted to do something gouache, but this this picture did not really. So I've yeah. never used gouache. What's it like? Um, it is a lot like acrylic, you okay. know, how you paint on there, except for it is very water-soluble. So even once you lay it down on there and you put other colors up on top of it, the colors underneath will come back through. Oh, okay. That's it will. It will pick back up and more than more so than anything else. Even watercolor. I mean, the watercolors I have, and once, once they're down, they're a little. They're even harder to scrub back up than than the uh, washers. But it's a very fun medium. So, what kind of things more. do you think suit well for gouache? Because you said you would have used it if you had a different reference. Um. It really, I think it was more just like you know, just the colors and things like that. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, and I'm getting a little bit more abstract with the colors I'm picking with watercolor, but it's easier for me yeah. to do that with with this with watercolor than it is with gouache. Gouache, you know, is is you can is more vibrant than the watercolors on there. So you know, but I don't know. I just maybe it's not that I'm comfortable with it or something, but. You know, if it, if it was something a little more vibrant, I think I would have picked it. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool. I like that. I love hearing um, why people make their decisions about stuff in art. I think it's cool. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Going to draw beard hairs. Clearly the most important part. Can you guys hear me chew on the microphone? Nope. No. Wait, no, I just spit all over my drawing. <laughs> I, I was salivating over my cookie. AFK, yeah. I love your shanks. They're so cute. Someone in chat drew a little shanks using my Pokemon thing. The, uh, the switch up the pose exercise? Mm-hmm, yeah. Good exercise. Yeah, it was a cute drawing. <laughs> I didn't know enough about co Pokemon to know the character well, but I really like the drawing. Yeah, it's cute, in it? In the uh, Sketch Daily Hangouts on there, they used to do something similar where they would... It was kind of like Pictionary, but it was with, uh, with Pokemon. Okay. So they would go to the Pokemon random generator that they had uh, <gasps> yes. on there, and they would pick a Pokemon, or one person would pick a Pokemon, and then they would verbally explain what the Pokemon was, and everybody oh else had to try and draw it. And most everybody else didn't have any clue, you know, uh, you know, about what most of the Pokemon are. You know, uh, you know they could get a Pikachu, and that was about it. But you never get a Pikachu. <laughs> so, you know, you get all of these weird explanations on there, and it was kind of you know just listening to everybody, you know, what how they viewed it and how people interpreted that. And some of them got pretty close. Some of them were just way off. But, that was always a fun exercise. Oh, God, mine would be so far off. <laughs> oh, I screwed up, damn it. It's fine. It'll be fine. Everything's perfect. <laughs> I, made the, I, didn't fine. Want shade, I didn't want to shade the neck that dark right there. <sighs> Everything sucks. It's okay. Eat your cookie and drink your wine. <laughs> Last time I ate my cookie, I spit all over the drawing. <laughs> I'll drink the wine. It's not your process. Don't mess with it. Mm hmm I did add the cookie to it, though. That was, that's new. That's a new addition. And I think that's going to be a, th a regular thing. What kind of cookie? Oh, you said it was like some... It's like a chocolate chip, but I think it also might have some type of peanut butter chocolate chip Reese's thing going on in it. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's not a quality cookie. It's not like one that you'd find pretentious Yelp reviews about it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it still works. I don't get... Cookies go pretty quick in my house, so I don't have to worry about... Do you have a cookie uh, jar? Yes, we do. Yeah, oh. you're a proper family. <laughs> actual cookie jar. We do, yes. Actually, I just had Girl Scout cookies in it a couple days ago. But... Which kinds? I don't even really know. They weren't in there long enough to... <laughs> you, you didn't even have to close the lid to the cookie jar, and they were just gone. Oh, man. Girl Scout cookies is a really strange concept to me, because we don't know they if that's okay. Be. They should be a strange uh, concept, because it is a little weird. It's really weird to me. <laughs> but they're pretty awesome, and they make ice cream flavors of them, too. What? Yeah. Not All cookies finished. should have an ice uh, a, a ice cream counterpart. Yes. AFK much says your drawing is giving him an A from the Walking Dead vibe. It's great. Yeah, I thought it was very um, Walking Dead esque. Thank mm -hmm. you, by the way. Um, that's why that's why I ended up changing the coloring because I was going to do it super painterly, and then I looked at the lines that I'd done, and I thought it was really kind of old comic style-ish, so I thought I'd kind of run with it, and you end up with a very Walking Dead style, so, yeah. Yeah, I picked up on that too, thank you. <laughs> well, I'm having an issue where, for some bizarre reason, it won't draw anymore, and I don't know why. What have I done? Did you lock the layer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always did. 
All right, let's try that one again, eh? <laughs> Question is, is how much time were you painting before you figured it out? Did not too not long, no. Okay. <laughs> I'd only just started that layer, and I was like, why is it not doing anything? <laughs> Yeah, because if you've been drawing it for like 15 minutes, and why is this? You know, this oh, is yeah, I've been subtle. sitting here the whole show, and nothing's been happening. <laughs> Got to turn that opacity up. Oh, look. You can hear us thinking. We're all focused. Getting our drawings done. In the zone. In the zone. <laughs> Not really in the zone. I think it's going up. How close I think how far I should take this. Man, you're flying on that thing. Oh. Oh, I love the Shinx's little cheeks. So cute. Oh my god, do my men just dropped their iPhone in white paint? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, the whole thing? Did you drop did you drop the whole thing in paint? What kind of paint? Uh I'm guessing it's acrylic looking at the painting. Acrylic may not be so bad, because once it dries you can peel it off. That's true. Oh. If it didn't get in like the plugs and stuff. Well he says it, it he says it goobed up the charge connector. Oh, no. That sounds bad. <laughs> that might be bad. But you still might be able... That might still be solvable with acrylic. Artist problems. <laughs> I've never done that. I always have a problem with, you know, making sure I don't dip my, my brush into my drinking glass, but... Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've, almost, I've almost done this so many times. I'm pretty sure I have done that, like, every time I've tried to paint. Does it count when my marker shoots out all into all my food, and then I just keep eating it? <laughs> Was this the big fatty marker? Mm-hmm. Does the 10-second rule apply to food that ink shoots all over? Absolutely. <laughs> as long as it doesn't mix enough. You can drink, you, it, this is science right here, you mm -hmm. can drink the bit around the ink before it mixes. It's okay. not science, don't believe that, but yes, absolutely. That, sound, that sounds about as good as my high school advice. Totally legit. <laughs> don't try very hard and drink around the spilled ink inside your, inside your uh, beverage. <laughs> Problem solvers. Absolutely. I wish I could draw lines faster. I think it's slow. I'm not checking the Reddit thing. Why am I not checking the Reddit thing? Oh god, I haven't checked that forever. Oh, that's fine, no one's commenting on there. It's okay. fine, it's just us commenting on there, because we're weird. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I need to do... That, oh. Nope. Okay. No, never mind. Ignore me. No, I do not like the thing I just drew. That was stupid. That looked really bad. Nuts. Whatever. Okay. So, has anyone got any, like, arty things coming up? Any, like, events that you're going to or anything? Anything you're looking forward to? Um... Nah, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, who needs art? <laughs> Finished curating a show might be one of the last ones to curate for a long time. Okay, how did that, that go? Went well. Uh, that went well. Uh, it was this uh, artist uh, that I know, she currently lives in L.A., named Molly Siegel, 
Okay. If you want to look her up, S E G A L does amazing watercolor work, figurative watercolor stuff. Um, yeah, that was a really cool show. We've shown her twice. Um, yeah. She's awesome. That show went well. Um, that was that was fun. And uh, yeah. I've just seen a picture by her of some hyenas. That yeah. looks so good. Yeah, she paints on a, a yuppo paper. Or maybe oh, yeah. Some, oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's all kind of the watercolor kind of pools and dries. And she's a. The, that one with the hyenas, that series was, yeah, it's like kind of based on family relationships and whatnot. So it's, you know, a lot of girls like punching each other in the face and, <laughs> and each other. It's got um, energy in it. Yeah. And they're pretty large. Lots of them are, 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 you know, we're up to like four, four by five feet or whatever, which is pretty wow. substantial for a watercolor. Yeah. And um, especially on that paper because that stuff's pretty spendy. Yeah, it was uh, that was cool stuff. It was one of those shows where I was like, I, I was bummed like I, like I couldn't like get a piece myself. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It was like I would totally have one of these if it was an option. Um. But yeah, her work's always really her, re, real nice, and she just recently had moved to LA and was setting up kind of a studio there and getting getting her footing there. It's a big city, so she's from um, she went to school in Boston. Uh huh. And, uh, yeah, and then we we're showing an artist there named uh, Naeem Brown, who teaches in Oakland here and kind of really cool narrative art. Uh, oh, yeah. That's all at fmoakland.com. <laughs> those things up. Very cool. How about yourself? Um, I, uh, I just applied for a table at um, Manchester MCM. So if I'm accepted into that, then I'll have two tables there, and I'll be exhibiting. That's in July, I believe. But I applied today. The, the, the applications go up quite early um, in mm -hmm. the year. Um, I've applied to Thought Bubble as well, so we'll see if we get into that. Thought Bubble's more of like um, really focused on indie artists and indie uh, like comicers. And it's very, um, rather than it being the kind of like anime or, or sci fi convention, that kind of atmosphere, it's more of a artists together and drawing together. <laughs> Kind of thing with like lots of art tables set up that everyone's working at and have got their stalls out. So it would be my first time being at that, so that would be quite interesting. That's but, uh, exciting. Yeah, I've got new I've got, avenues and territories. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've got um the London one, the London MCM, all booked up and ready. So I'll I'll be going to that in May. Um, and then yeah, so th those are all my shows at the moment, getting ready for them. And it's mainly um, because I've got to make a brand new body of work. I'm just basically working on that and commissions at the moment and trying to get all of that done fast <laughs> and on time. Yeah. How many commissions do you usually have running at once? Um, I'm usually around the 20 commissions at a time, Mark. Oh my god. <laughs> That's uh, commissions. Uh, well, I go to conventions, so oh. th that's the big thing. The big thing with conventions is you make a certain amount of money at the show, but you also make a decent amount of money after the show from commissions. So I'll have, like, for example, one of the commissions that people absolutely love at, at places like MCM is my Pokemon team that I do. So I'll say that I'll draw you and your six top Pokemon in whatever setting you want, you can design it in any way. You can change all the colors. You can let you can change it however you want and make this unique to your Pokemon experience, like how you imagine your Pokemon. And I'll have a big canvas, like a big wooden uh, thing with a printed one, a printed previous commission on it of one of those. Um, and I've done, I tend to get one of those requested every single show that I go to. Um, and then it tends to be things like I'll be sitting there drawing someone live at the show and then they'll say, oh, I'm working on a book and I'd love a cover. Or I'm working on a music album and I'd love album art and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So 
I tend to have between 10 and 20 of those going on at any one time and then I'll put out a message saying that uh, they're that I'm reopened and stuff or I, I get people to write down on a list so that they're in order um, and then I'll send a, an email out and say um, I'm letting you guys know first that my commissions are open. That means they can get back to me straight away. But yeah, it, it's good fun. Been an organized there. I have to be really because I don't want to let anyone down. That's the thing. Mm. Like when I did my first show and I started drawing people live for the first time, I felt so bad because I turned so many people away, and they'd been mm -hmm. standing there watching me draw for a while, and it just made me feel awful. So now it it feels kind of pretentious to say I'm sorry you've got to book a slot or I'm sorry there's a waiting list you have to wait but it stops me from saying yes yes I'll do that and then never being able to get around to it because mm -hmm. there's too long of a line so yeah. it, it's nice to have like a block and say this is the block that I'm doing now and then after that I'll reopen again and then I can work on that block and then I've got like a, a blackboard in my in my bedroom where I write up all the things that I've got all the commissions that are going on and then I cross them off and then I've also got a um, an Excel document with all of the data in it, mm -hmm. all of their contact info and everything in it so that I can make sure that I don't miss anyone and yeah it's all about m making sure I don't let anyone down really. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, it's like it's like that that kind of the little pressure you put on yourself yeah. to let other people down. It's funny because it, that's all like really good strategies and organization to just kind of <laughs> keep a constant, steady stream of business and income. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I see with a lot of artists, fellow artists, who are like good friends of mine, who I see at conventions, is that they just don't, because they don't live off of it, they don't act in a way that would um, make it a full-time job because mm -hmm. they've got a job already and they want it to be a full-time job but yeah. they don't act with the same I guess conviction or something I, I don't know what the correct word for it is but you have to have this level of organization to be able to do it full-time otherwise exactly. you won't cope like you you literally you just won't cope so I find that a lot of artists will say, oh, you're too businesslike or something. It's like, I have to be that businesslike. No, or... you're doing it the way you're supposed to do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, like, they say that's not very arty or whatever, but I have to be like this if I want this to be my career. There's yeah. no other way around it. It has to be treated like a business that needs to make money. And obviously it still has that heart element in it because I absolutely love it to pieces. But it... it if you want it to be a full-time job, you have to treat it like you're running a business that's going to be your full-time job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really important thing. A lot of people don't catch. I mean, that's like yeah. I, I kind of had a moment like a while back. Why I was became clear I was going to be I was going to be getting laid off from my work, so I just started reaching out more for commissions and I was finding them. And it was in yeah. that experience as though I did not find enough to live off of it at this moment, I did find enough where I realized, okay, uh, just like another year, finishing up the year, saving money, then I can then I can go for that. I can and try it. And it does grow as well. With every commission you do, there's another chance for someone mm -hmm. to spread the word of you. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I always say that I didn't do any proper schooling. I didn't go to college or anything for art. But what I did do is an accounting course, a basics accounting course that had a mm -hmm. business element where they taught you marketing and stuff. That mm -hmm. has been so valuable. Like if you have the opportunity to do that, and the, the one that I did um, was on a website called skillsology.something.org or something. Um, and it just, something like that, just a basics accounting, accounting course or getting a book like accounting for dummies or business for dummies because they're actually really well written those yeah. books that will be yeah. so invaluable for this kind of job because you don't learn it any other way other than just trial and error well I, one of the, a big that's a big hindrance out here too because doing just filing taxes I mean I hear in other countries it's 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 a little easier but there's yeah, actually I mean, a lobby of 
you know, like the turbo tax and into it or whatever, that lobby to the government in the US and they keep the tax process really complicated so you have to hire accountants all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really like for my business that's a partnership, it's in, it's really complicated. I could yeah. not do it myself. It's too much work. It takes too much knowledge about it. And so I end up working doing a bunch of bookkeeping and then going over it with fortunately with my dad who's an accountant and then we send that off to someone else who can file a partnership return so that we can get it back and then he can help do the return because of all the expenses. It's just this, it's an insanely yeah. long complicated process and yeah. it's been such a massive hindrance. Um, yeah. I think, it, I honestly think it's one of the major things. It's not, it's not, the thing is, is it's not paying taxes that's slowing down small business. It's just how complicated and time consuming it is to figure out how to pay taxes out yeah. here. And yeah, that's, we have a similar issue in that it's so much easier to do it, but there's so many automated, like, robot things. The problem with that is you get a lot of mistakes done. So mm -hmm. I ended up with HM Revenue, which is the person who runs um, all of our, like, money and taxes and all of that. Mm -hmm. I had them chasing me down, claiming that I owed them all of this money. Mm -hmm. And... I absolutely didn't owe them that money. They had documents saying that I owed them money from dates when my business didn't even exist. I was like, <laughs> this makes no sense. I don't owe you this money. And the thing is, the human people, they're brilliant. You call them up yeah. and you say, right, I need your advice because this is happening and I don't know what to do. And they, and they were just like, look, you're absolutely right. You do not owe this money. I don't know why you're being told you do owe this money. It's ridiculous and we'll do everything we can to help you. But there's a robot that runs it. So the issue is you've got to convince the people who run the robots in a completely different department <laughs> to sort it out. <laughs> I had to send so many letters to just different departments, like proper like British strongly worded letter, I do not owe this money, uh, until the point where all of a sudden I get a letter saying, we've reviewed your so-and-so and discovered you haven't. And then, last month, I, well this month, I got a... Uh, I got a letter saying the exact people I'd had to complain to all that time are mm -hmm. basically getting dissolved, that little robot section, and it's combining yeah. with something else, which means that my whole thing has to get reapplied and they have to prove that I don't owe that money all over again. And it's like, ah. Yeah. So if everything goes right and smoothly, we have probably one of the best, uh, the best situations that I'm aware of, certainly mm. better than than America. Yeah. But if something goes wrong, it is so hard to get it fixed. <laughs> yeah, I can see getting through that. Out here, I haven't, unfortunately I haven't had anyone come after me for any mistakes or anything. Um, but the times I've had to call, like the, the out here, the IRS or the, in California, the franchise, California Franchise Tax Board, they've been, like their, their actual phone service is pretty amazing. It's so some of the, I don't know, I mean I'm sure other people have had different experiences, but like for me it's like, their customer service on the phone was was awesome. And even, yeah. I almost would be tempted to record it and play it on here sometime. The California Franchise Tax Board automated voice, it even sounded like the robot guy is having fun when he's saying it. Like, <laughs> if you would like to speak with a representative, press one. Like, he's really <laughs> excited. It was weird, but uh, fortunately, the human elements are, and the places are, were actually helpful, you know, in understanding. Yeah. It's usually the human people that you can actually talk to. They're just yeah. wonderful. And they're not like classic call center people who are trying to force you to do whatever. They're actually yeah. really helpful. Yeah, definitely. They're not, yeah, they don't have like an, there's not like an allegiance feel or something, you know, they're just trying to like screw you. They have no personal investment in how it goes for you. So it's really nice. Anthony, you're really kind of pulling that flag into the background and making that work there. I know you, were, you said you were struggling with it earlier. I still don't know. I'm happy with it. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, keep, keep playing with it. Keep playing with it. I feel the same way. It is what it is. Yeah. That's why I like some of the RGD stuff on there because I don't really have yeah. I mean, There's no stress behind it. 
Yeah. You, know, you can try around it. You can play around with stuff, and you can do whatever you want. And, no stress. Says you. Well, <laughs> that's because I post it no matter what it is. You know, even if it's you know. Oh, I don't. Even if I'm not happy. Oh, uh, I don't at all. <laughs> no, I don't at all either. <laughs> So many torn up RGDs in the garbage. Yes, yeah, same. <laughs> There's so many in like sketchbooks that I've done, and they'll they will never see the light of day. They taught me mm. stuff art wise, but they will never be shown to their people. Mm. There was a couple of them that I never finished that I didn't post on there, but I don't think there's ever been one that I finished that I didn't post. Wow. Well, good, good, good. Up. That's not a phrase. Just make it good up on you. That doesn't that doesn't work for anything. <laughs> good for you're, you. You're a brave man. <laughs> yeah. You're braver than I. Should be using this more. I think I've got too many soft tones in this. I think I need to get more like texture in. That's something that I, I struggle with trying to find oh my god look at that look at the beard <gasps> I've got all of the beard and hair and like one eyebrow and one layer and it looks glorious <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah no I, I struggle with trying to combine soft texture and then hard texture I, mm. I usually end up going too far one or the other way yeah do you guys ever have that issue, or do you not find that you have that issue because you work with traditional media? I, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 that's, that's kind of a, I don't know if that was really like a, how, how would you define like the, that difference between the hard and the soft texture? Like. Okay, so um, certainly when you're working digital, there can be a habit to sit here and smudge everything, right? Uh, okay. And yeah. then you end up with this really like, um, very digital looking image and also it looks very photoshopped, it looks very like um, like there's no substance there, there's no texture. Mm -hmm. So then I'll overcompensate the other way and I'll end up putting loads of texture in by using like hard brushes and trying to act as though I'm painting in real life, something like that. And then I end up with this weird thing where everything looks too harsh and you've lost the kind of appeal that you get with smudgy smudgy lines. Do you guys mm. find that with traditional media at all? Do you have any tricks with that? Um, I mean, I guess it all depends on the medium. I think a lot of people, when they're learning to oil paint, there's too many soft lines. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the tendency, and a lot of that can just be not using the right brushes. Uh, or painting too much wet on wet. But I think because oil, it's it's always so it's so easy to blend that naturally you'll want to you'll just want to blend everything. Yeah. And then yeah. it's real soft. And sometimes like the best thing with oil is to just learn to go in there with a flat edge brush and just kind of lay in like little swatches of paint, just a little like swatch and then swatch swatch and then not. It helps when I say it in a pattern in three times and move my hand. <laughs> I don't know what, I, what was I doing? That doesn't. Anyways, um, it's all right. It helped me visualize. Yeah, yeah. Swatch, swatch, swatch. Just do that, and you have painting. Sounds um, like a product that I want to buy. Swatch, Actually, swatch, aren't watch? there watches? There are swatches that are watches. Yeah. Yeah. Switch. But I don't know if you want to buy them. <laughs> no, I'm not sure I do either. We're not. Anyway. We, didn't get paid. we didn't get paid by them, so. Um, but yeah, that's that was kind of a thing that helped. Like you, when you're kind of working on structure, that when you get that flat edge brush and you really focus on kind of leaving a lot of hard lines, mm -hmm. it helps because it also forces you to really make decisions. When you have too many soft lines, you kind of just push things around. Yeah. But when you use hard lines, you have to be like, okay, now where is this going to be? Where is this feature? Because uh, it's it, photos and real life, everything can be really deceiving. Your eyes yeah. are constantly changing what's in front of you to try to make things make a little more sense. It will it will organize features on the face to make it look a little more, you know, a little more symmetrical than it might actually be. Um, there's a book by James Elkins where I think he talks about that a lot. What the hell was it? Um, is it Believing is Seen? I can't remember. Look it up. That sounds like an arty name. Yeah, 
Uh, he he teaches. I think he teaches at the uh, Chicago Art Institute. And uh, yeah, so it's very arty. Yeah, like what painting is, which is a book that kind of compares the process of painting to alchemy and those different things. And I made that eye too dark. Oh, that's gonna mm. be hard to recover from. Oh, it's so dark now. <laughs> You know the thing where you make something dark and you like, I have to change like the whole drawing around this just to make it work, you know? And then that's a bad path to go, especially when you're doing hatching, because then you'll you'll just keep yeah. you'll keep drawing hatches and hatches until eventually the whole thing just turns into a muddled mess. Yeah. Whoops. I don't think this is the book. Oh, uh, I think the object stares back is I think a book that talk it. I remember that book talking about it, but I'm not entirely sure. I could totally be tripping. You know, that could have been another book. I think I've heard of that. I think that's a famous thing. Yeah, it was a... It was a um, I don't know, maybe it was. <laughs> it was <probably laughs> I really I was going to say, yeah, it was, and I realized, yeah. oh, it probably wasn't. Like, what's that, like, an art kind of theory or critique book? Like, they're not popping up on the, you know, bestsellers list very often, so... Uh, you know, I remember liking it, but then it's that conundrum where if I liked it so much, how come I don't remember a lot of it? So how much could I have really liked how, it? How much did you actually like it, yeah. But, uh, yeah. He has another book called uh, How to Use Your Eyes. And then, oh, and the tradition of John Berger's Ways of Seeing. Maybe that's the book I was confused with. He writes good books, too. Who's that? I think it's, I don't know what it's pronounced. I think it's John Berger. I don't know if it's Berger or Berger. Probably Berger. B-E-R-G-E-R. -E -E Berger is probably just me being hungry. Berger. Berger. <laughs> In all fairness, Berger isn't that much better. You can tell it's late when I'm just, like, giggling at the word burger. Burger is a pretty hilarious word, and it's way too close to booger, but <laughs> it's still fantastic. Burger. <laughs> what are we doing? Burgers. <laughs> Drawing a beard. Drawing a beard right now, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so if you guys are... Yeah, I enjoyed drawing the beard, actually. So if mm. you guys are sitting down, you decide to sit down with a... Uh, your pad. Mm -hmm. What is the first thing you probably draw? Wieners. No. Um. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't just ever. I never really just draw anymore. I don't just pick out a paper and then just make something up out of my head and draw. It's, there's usually like some project or thing that I'm in the middle of that I want to work on. Yeah. Or or I want to do you know uh, like an RGD or a. Uh, or draw, like, I've just been drawing a lot of portraits lately. Maybe draw, like, a portrait of a friend or something. I find How it really, you? really hard to draw people I know. It's way harder. It's way harder, because you see the mistakes immediately. Yes, yeah. And you know they'll know. You'll be like, they'll, you'll be like oh, they look at it, and they'll, they'll, they'll know. They'll know that doesn't look like them. They always say it looks amazing, but still. Like, I, I'll... They're just being nice. Yeah, <laughs> I, I find that, um... I can usually draw a person using, like, you know when you meet someone for the first time, you kind of, like, look at them in a more objective way. Yeah. I have to have that to be able to draw someone. So if I draw someone who I know, who I've seen their face over and over again, I find it really hard to move back into that objective, like, vision, I guess. Oh, I, I can't even really do it. It's a nightmare. I remember one time I, I wanted to draw a portrait of my brother. Like, he was commissioning me to draw a portrait of him for, like, a gift thing. And I had to draw it, I think it was 13 times <laughs> until I finally... And I, at one point, like, around the eighth time, I literally tried just doing a tracing. Like, because it was kind of a blurry photograph. Yeah. That's why I learned the blurry photograph thing again. And I did that thing where I traced it in a pencil, like, heavy, and then rubbed it on another sheet of paper, and it still looked wrong. <laughs> It, and then I realized eventually it was kind of like a weird photo, but even when I got a new photo, it still was just a total nightmare. It was the, it might have been the least fun I've ever had making a drawing. And it's, but it, it just depends. I think it's like sometimes like you're inspired and you can make drawings, and then yeah, I think it's I don't know like because there's some there's people I know that when I draw them I can I can just do it really easily, 
And I think it's just all a matter of how much you want to do it, but but then I don't know. Like I think it's people I see on a very regular routine are, are the ones I struggle yeah. with the most. Yeah, I agree. What about you, Anthony? Do you find the same thing? Hello? Uh oh. <laughs> please? Is he there? I think his hand's frozen. Oh, no. Wait. We might have lost him. He'll be back. Let me have a look. Hello, you can see my face now. Okay. Let me move that down a bit. Uh, where is he? Oh no, he's dropped from the call. Oh no. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, I can see your drawing now. I'm going to look at oh, you haven't looked at it yet? Yeah, well, I mean, I saw it in the pencil stage, but I haven't seen it since then because I just jumped out to sort out stuffs. I'm going to send him the link again in case he's lost it. Mm-hmm. Oh no, his computer's frozen. He's got to re reboot his computer. Oh, no, no, I think that was when it happened earlier. I think it happened again. Really? Oh my god. He'll oh, be dear. back. I like yours. I'm just looking at yours. Thanks. I like... Uh, yeah, I like all the little hash lines. Yeah, that uh, takes forever. I'm trying to... It's interesting, because usually I kind of take more time with those, but since we start doing these recordings, I've been trying to, like, speed up my process and jump straight to the ink faster and yeah. sort and kind of sort those lines out quicker than normal. Um, and it's been, it's been good, you know? It's, but it's so funny, because instinctually in my head, I'm like, oh, the lines are so sloppy, you know? But I know that's just me being... Oh, no, being it looks great here. Well, that's because you're just far away from it. What, I like, can see it up close. Oh, across, yeah, the planet. across across the planet. <laughs> if it was we, eight hours earlier, huh? We've t we've taken really different routes to the picture. I think they're gonna look really different. Yeah, I think so. I think it's all, and I think it was just different choices made to handle the uh, just the kind of dealing with the quality of the photo and just whatever the parameters were that we kind of had to roll with. Oh, he's back. Anthony's back. Yeah. Can you hear us, Anthony? Yeah, I can. Uh oh, I just saw your tag pop up. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yours oh. is cool too. I haven't seen any of yours until the stream started. Like, I just jumped back to not streaming my screen so I can look at everyone's artwork. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm having overheating issues with my computer, so... Oh, no. Should be good for another hour. Okay. I like, um... I like how piercing you've got the eyes. Mm -hmm. Using that blue right next to the pale colors, it's really, really strong. I like that. Thanks. Okay, I'll go back to Yeah, I'm not... Tomorrow. Terribly happy with the background on there, but the portrait portion of it on there. I think it's hmm. Didn't have a chance to say uh, to say good night to uh, AFK much. Yeah, I just saw that he he vanished. But uh, it's a good question. Uh, July with dashes asks uh, if if my roommate is currently secretly working on the drawing as well. I'm a little curious myself. <laughs> Not sure. See if he pops up. I hope so. I hope so. Why doesn't he post it? He he just he that's he just doesn't. He's he rubbish. Just, he likes to, <laughs> he no, he just he, he just wants to be in the background. That's just like his his thing. He doesn't he, lur he he's a lurker, and he just uh, that's just his jam, I guess. I try to get him to post stuff so much. I've been trying okay. to get him to get an account and post the art because it's all really good, but not his jam, I suppose. That's fair enough, though, isn't it? No, it isn't. I'll get them. <laughs> oh, but the people that post it on there deserve to see awesome stuff that people make. That's a good route. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try yes, to make them feel guilty angle. with that route. <laughs> Guilt them into it. Yeah, you have a duty to make sure that they see the art. To which he can Don't say, laugh. "Nah." 
and then that'll be it. To which he says, he said duty. And then, yeah, exactly, then I'm bust, because then I'll start laughing, too. I'll be like, oh my god, I almost missed it. <laughs> yeah, I totally should have just left the background on, but he said something about the hole. I'll never get to the background. There's no way. Well, if it wasn't in the subject portion of it, I would have just left it off. But then, oh, no, well, maybe I can do something with that, but no, I should have just realized. That's a bad idea. Mm. You know what? Right. Command Z is the best thing. Just <laughs> undo, 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 undo. <laughs> well, the one thing I would kill so for that that I have is that when my computer froze up on there, I didn't lose any of my work. Mm-hmm. True. Absolutely true. Take that. Yeah, I haven't saved in a while. I should probably do that. <laughs> Crash. Then again, if my computer crashes, the whole stream goes down, so meh. Yeah. <laughs> kind of screwed. Yeah, we all lose if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> I think this kind of looks like him. Yeah, that's about where I'm at, too. <laughs> I feel like you guys have gotten it closer than I have, and I'm trying to... I've got I've gone into, like, little competitive mode now. I want to, like, try <laughs> to fight my way back. <laughs> what role would you like us to play? Would you like us to be very bullying and intense, or, uh, <laughs> or a Go Team Go Spirit? I don't know. I might not hear you because I'll be focusing so much. <laughs> see, this is right here. It would be fun to see the faces as everyone hunkers down and gets into serious mode. Maybe we need face cams as well, like just in the corners. Actually, mine does. I can do that with mine. You can do you a can face do. cam. Yeah, I can add other cameras. <gasps> See, I wish I could. I thought about doing that with mine, like trying to plug it into my other laptop and then doing it, but then I'd have to I'd just join it twice, I guess. Oh, God, I don't even know how to do that. I have no Considering idea. Considering the fact that we crashed this once with a chat already and then joined it, yeah, I don't like, try it in the randomly, you know? <clears throat> That's for more experimentation later. I was happy enough that I got this thing to just stay focused on the, with, without auto focusing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a massive help. There. Anthony, do you draw on a flat table? No. You just have your you have your camera set up in a way where you can capture it parallel or with the angle properly. Well, I could do it more on there, but mine sits on a tripod here, and you can since I have the other camera in there now, mm -hmm. so you guys can all see me. Ah. Uh. Kind of show you. Oh, oh, yeah, I see. So you have two cameras hooked up right now? Well, I have the laptop camera. Oh, I see. See, that's what I was thinking of doing. How would you get it to bring that other screen there in Google Hangouts without crashing the whole thing? Well, that's what I said. I have this other software that allows you to... That's what I use to rotate the camera. But here, I'll have to turn off this light. And yeah, this light. I, should, I should try to get something like that. There, they're all dark. But... Uh, but now you can't actually see it. Mm -hmm. So you have the camera hooked to the light there, actually? So you can see. No. There's, oh, uh, I see. I have, it a, is. I have a camera tripod, mm -hmm. and then I have the camera I have has a, has a, is a, uh, a base that mounts to a tripod mount. Oh. So it's just tilted down, and I can hear. You guys can see. I can tilt it up. Tilt it back down. But it basically just points straight down at my... Oops, now I lost where it was at. But because it's on a tripod, it's at the same angle that my table is at. Ah, I see. And actually, if I weighted it down here, because it's, it's a regular uh, camera tripod, if I put it down in there, I could actually put the, the back leg and tilt it forward more. Mm. And then I could actually get it so that it would be level. Get on my leg. 
it's on. That's a good setup. It works. God, I messed up my whole camera. <laughs> That's all right. Sarah's in the zone now. We should distract her. Because <laughs> I do have a little bit of that keystoning, you know, that comes in. You know, the, the bottom is, is definitely shorter than the top. Mm. And I would like to fix that on there, and that's how I'd fix that is by because if I lean the camera forward like that more. Oh, I just made a huge mistake on my drill. Oh no! Oh god! Ugh! Ugh! Yuck! Yuck! You're right there. I really don't like how that looks. But this webcam software actually is pretty good. I'm just using the free version, so that's why it's the little minicam.com thing in the corner. But I'm thinking about how much is the actual What's version? The name of it? Fifty dollars. Ooh, that's how they get you. Well, that's not that bad. I mean, that's not actually that bad, no. Whatever. That's how they get you. <laughs> Don't even care. I said that's how they get you. What's it called? Minicam. Mini can, okay. But I don't know if it's available for Mac. Oh, right, yeah, good point. Nothing's ever available for Mac. But there should be something. <laughs> something <laughs> out in the ether. <laughs> what the hell was that noise? Did anyone else hear that? I did, it sounded like a duck. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was thinking someone's got a duck. <laughs> Do you have a duck? You're the one with... 26 gerbils or whatever. No, I don't have a duck. You might have a duck and not know it yet. Did you get a phone call saying that there, there are little there ducks running ducks. around? That you there's a duck infestation? I have a shirt that says I'm a baby duck on it, though. Is there anything else on the shirt, or is that just is that all it just says? Uh, there's a little picture of a baby duck, and it says... Oh, I can't remember what it says. It says something like, um, I am a baby duck... Uh, and uh, it says some kind of insult at people. I, I can't remember, but I got it from a, go, a guy. Go quack it yourself. Excuse me. <laughs> Does it say go quack yourself? No. Oh. Uh, wait, I'm gonna see if I can find it. I. Oh, I'm a baby duck, and you are nothing. That's what it says. Oh, good lord, that's intense. That goes right for the heart, doesn't it? <laughs> it's got an adorable little baby duck on it. It's like, it might as well like, I'm a baby duck, and your son won't call you. It's like, oh, my God! Oh, wow. you know? oh my God, right? So earlier this week on Reddit, I was I, I told someone the uh, the the Enterprise story, the fact that I, I, one of my first words was Enterprise. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I said that, but I haven't become a Starship captain yet. Um, so I, I, I'm a bit disappointed. And someone replied, so's your father, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I just went, wow. And then they immediately apologized and said, this is what happens when a Canadian tries to troll. And they were just like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I absolutely didn't mean it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's like, they, they go for it. <laughs> they like they're trolling like they like they're hockey intense, you know. It's, yeah, we have uh, to apologize immediately. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, they turn right to the apology too. The Canadian in them comes out. <laughs> if it was America, we would just blame it on you. We'd just be like, "Well, you set me up. That's on you. It's on you. I'm fine. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. It's fine. Get over it. Jeez, relax. It's a joke." I hate those lines, but I think I don't have to tear this into a million pieces yet. I'm going to keep going with it. You haven't reached the appropriate level of hate for it? Yeah, no, I'm not quite there. The disdain isn't the level of your liking. You'd probably see my hand shaking. If I was getting to that level, I would, I would be getting pretty, pretty annoyed by the drawing. So have you guys ever injured yourself drawing? Um, like punching a wall or something? Or do you mean like drawing so much I get arthritis or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like an injury caused by drawing. I mean, I've stabbed myself. But I'm... <laughs> I've made myself sick what enough. I have... <laughs> How did you stab yourself? How did you stab yourself? You have to elaborate on that. 
I used to do a lot of scratch board, and, we, and the, the teacher I had taught us how to use oh. an X-Acto knife. Oh, there you go. <sighs> Well, so, there's and a I've, problem. <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've reached for it, and actually I still have it in my pen holder now, and every now and then I reach over for it and catch the tip. Oh, my god! Why don't you take it out of the pen holder? <laughs> because then it would ruin the blade. You, Why don't you, have you not do that? You're in control. You can do this. You can make you can make the change. Oh, it's, it is sitting right here, and I'm talking about it. Yeah, I was looking for it in the pen holder. <laughs> yeah, there's my exact one. I, I don't even know why it's there. I'm in the pen holder where I can stab myself. I can't stab oh, myself when it's sitting on the story. desk. Yes, we get to get the, the stabbing on. So, but no, beyond that, I don't think I've ever heard of so. What about you, Mike? I've been in things where, like, I remember I had a deadline for a group show, and I was drawing this, this ballpoint pen piece that was very tedious. <laughs> and I had to draw like I was, was kind of did my drawing record, which I think I did. I don't remember how many hours it was, but it was like I did like a sixteen-hour drawing shift. Oh, dude. And, then I, and then I went to work, and then I got off, and I tried sleeping for like two hours, and then draw for like another twelve hours, and then I went to work, and then did it again. And it was the problem was is the paper was so big. I had it was like a, it was like a drawing that was something like four feet tall by two and a half, three feet. Yeah. And it was, it was too big for a tape my table, so I had I had it taped on my wall. But it, the only wall I could tape it on was above my couch, so I had to stand on my couch. So one foot was on the cushion oh, and one was on oh the chair, God. and I had to work on the drawing like that. So I would draw for for like an hour or so, and then my neck and shoulders would hurt so much I'd just lay on the floor and stare at the ceiling for like ten minutes, oh and then God. go back at the drawing. And so that was really painful, and I was I drew until I just actually was physically just like like I had the flu, like I just couldn't function, and as support, my uh, my good friend and roommate Andrew at the time, uh, he did a thing where you know he loved the game Silent Hill too, and he wanted to show it to me, which is a fucking amazing game. And um, so he started it, and in one of my drawing sessions, he just played all the way through Silent Hill too, from beginning to end, like as I was drawing. So I had like that to be entertained, and then also he could do that and kind of do a you know like an endeavor. Yeah. It was uh, it was awesome. That was actually that 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 made it all worth it. Cause I actually I don't even really care much for the drawing. Oop, I just had butt in my camera. But that made it all worth it. I think in the end there. And uh, <laughs> but and then I ha I've had that happen before. I did this collage where um, it was for another group show, and it was out here in California. There's like the Spanish missions when the settlers were whatever when the settlers were exploiting people. That's like how America's <laughs> founded. And um, okay. so the uh, <laughs> find indigenous people and exploit them. And so in school, they always had a project when you were in fifth grade where you would rebuild one of like the Spanish missions with you know sugar cubes or clay or whatever. Aww. And so someone did in someone did an art show which was like build a Spanish mission and um, that but like as like, with artists, you know, like grown up Proper artists. Eyes, yeah. Yeah, and that was the and that was a fun idea. And a friend asked if I wanted to be in the show and I wasn't really thinking much about it. And she's like, What Spanish mission would you do? And I just requested to give me the one with the most party. So they gave me the mission of Santa Barbara because that was like a party town and party school. And I'm like, okay. And so I thought what I would do is I'd make this triptych of the uh, of the it like so it's like a triptych mantle piece and in the center it's of the Virgin Mary and then the I had the uh, Greek cross for frats and then the Spanish cross on the other side and then it would have like these little kind of prayer candles in the middle and I would sp I sprayed it with Aquadigio uh, cologne so it smelled like a frat at the time oh my God. <laughs> and then it uh and the thing was though is all the the Virgin Mother was made by collaging a bunch of photos of drunk college kids partying. And I like, set a rule for myself that it had to be, I couldn't just put the photo anywhere or manipulate the photographs. I just had to find the photos on, at the time, MySpace. So let's date this era. Oh, wow. But it was on MySpace. And um, I think it was my, maybe even Facebook a little bit, but but I'll, I had to then cut out all these photos. And this thing was big. It was like three by five. It was about, well, it was about four feet tall and maybe five feet across. It's on my website. Let me just load it here. I can do a let me I can do a screen share of this. It's kind of hard to describe without. Um, 
Give me one quick second. Oh, you're I doing a great job of describing it. And then, yeah, and the rule was is I, I couldn't turn the photographs upside down or anything. Right. Uh, so it had to, they had to kind of be in their original format. Let me see if I can find a... I've seen the picture already. Uh, Oh, is that, is that as big as the picture gets? I can find a better one. <laughs> it's just weird to describe. Because the, the effect of it, when it works effectively, was that you would it, up close you would look at it and you would just see a bunch of parting people, but then when you walked away from it, like 10 feet away, right. then you could see the Virgin Mother. Yeah. In it. Um, so I can find this. Sorry, give me a minute. It's all right. There we go. Um, Is that popping up properly? Where have you put it? It's I'm screen sharing it right now. Yeah. Oh right, okay. Yeah, that's it. So up close you wouldn't see the Virgin Mary in there, but then when you stood back from the piece then you could see her. And it's it's easier to see when it's like a little photo. Oh yeah. If I like squint yeah. I can see it transform. That's yeah. really cool. So that was a it was an absolute nightmare to make that thing. So I had to build all the panels from scratch. And uh, so, like, for her example, like, her left, our right eye is just, like, a drunk girl's profile, and her hair is making that shape. So it was all just, like, looking through all these photos and then cutting them out and then trying to, like, line them up to, like, okay, that makes the line and that makes the shadow. I didn't use any, like, software or anything. So yeah. it just took, it took so many hours, and I was working on it in my studio, so I would just, and then what made it worse is I had to squint to see if it was working. So I would just work on it for, like, two hours, and then my vision, my eyes would start crossing, oh, like, God. without me trying, and they would start going blurry. So then I had a chair in my studio, and I'd just go sit back in the chair and, like, try to sleep for, like, 20 minutes, oh, and then go back to it. And I just did that for until the show. Um, and then now it's just sitting in my closet. I'm, I don't have I, there's nothing, I don't have anything I can do with this thing. It, like, closes, and then it, 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 uh, and it has, like, a uh, phi delta... A cross, you know, on the front of it, like, but there's no, I don't have anything I can do with it, so now this thing just sits in my closet, closed up all the time, and I spent all that time on it. <laughs> I'm proud of it, though, I'm proud of it. It's really yeah, cool. Whatever. Yeah, so I haven't, so fortunately, there hasn't been any, like, permanent physical, or any real... Serious injuries, but definitely taken some tolls on myself. Yeah. How about you? You you drew for what twenty six hours straight one time? So yeah, so a uh, crunch time for um for when I've got a book coming out, then I do I do mental days, and I did a twenty four hour a twenty six hour day recently. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking there's that's more hours than there are in the day? Yes. It is more hours than there are in a day. So yeah. I would just stay up constantly for that amount of time and then just pass out and sleep for like three mm. hours and then get up again and work for that amount of time again just <laughs> to make sure that it was ready to send to the printers. Um, but I actually, that wasn't when I injured my hand. Um, I had, uh, so I did, I've injured my hand several times at conventions where basically I drew for too long, more longer than I should have, and I didn't take proper breaks. Mm. Um, I've ended up inflaming all the ligaments in my uh, little finger on my right hand, um, oh, and I knocked out some of the vertebrae in my spine. Uh, <laughs> I think it was three Jeez. of the vertebrae ended up. Is this conventions? This have these all happen? This was just from drawing for too long oh. at conventions. Um, and from no Cincinnati, wonder that like all the all the the, the family and loved ones are uh, around and incur like keeping an eye on you. You know. Yeah, exactly. They they proper look after me now because of that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I ended up. Um, I ended up at a. Uh, 
a, not a chiropractor, a physiotherapist, that's it. Mm. Um, and he basically taught me how to sit properly and work and basically said, whenever you're drawing, move the piece of paper, not yourself, because that's why I was injuring myself. I was leaning at stupid angles. Was um, it traditional or was it? Yeah, traditional. Um, so I was drawing with pens and markers and pencils. Um, and I would just draw ridiculously detailed um, portraits, but in like an anime style. But I'd draw, if someone sat down with a cosplay, I'd draw every little detail on their cosplay. Um, How long would that take you? So um, it roughly takes about 45 minutes to an hour per drawing, depending on what they want. So Because people can ask to have added extras in, so they can say, I'd like... I don't know, a Charizard behind me or a Pikachu on my shoulder or I'd like to be sitting next to my favourite anime character, something like that. So it takes around um, 45 minutes to an hour-ish. Um, and I usually do a half body, but sometimes I'll do full body if it suits the piece better um, or if they request it. But yeah, so I ended up seriously injuring all down my arm, having to get so much chiropractic <laughs> work done it, on it, and wow. now I have to be really careful, because I was basically told, I, I asked someone about the ligaments issue, and I said, um, how long is it going to take to heal? And they said, oh yeah, it'll take four weeks to heal, but <laughs> it'll only heal if you stop drawing. The moment Ooh. you start drawing again, you'll injure it again, even if it's healed. So basically, I'm continuously injuring my hand. <laughs> so, the basic, so essentially, there's a time limit on me drawing. Oh, so God. Have, yeah, well, you so, have to do is you, you just learn with your other hand. That's what a lot of people say. They say, just learn with your other hand. I don't think it's that simple, but we'll see. No, no, it won't be simple. It's just <laughs> what you'll end up doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when that hand gets injured, it's going to be, you know that, uh, that documentary, King Gimp? Did you hear about that? No. Are you talking about the person who can draw with their feet? Uh, no, there's the guy that I can't remember if it's cerebral palsy or what he has, but it's uh, or if it was he uh, he has the paintbrush attached to a thing on his head and he paints with his head because he can't what? move his arms and legs away. And then it was nominated for Academy Award and won for best documentary. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I talk about the movie like I've seen it, but I actually haven't seen it. <laughs> it's supposed to be good. So now that I just remember that, I need to watch that. Now you um, know. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, injuries happen. It, it, like, yeah, if you're working, make sure you take breaks because you will, like, do damage. <laughs> yeah, I like how you give that advice, but you totally aren't following it yourself. Oh, I do. I do follow that. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. No, I absolutely mm -hmm. do. Oh, I I'm, no, I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just I absolutely talking. do. Um, <laughs> I don't have a choice, though, because my hand will give out if I don't. Like, uh. I'll then be unable to draw the next day. So if I want to be able to just be able to work, then I have to follow that advice. Mm. I don't have a choice. So, <laughs> yeah. So I've got, like, a, a convention. Um, mm. A lot of people will see... I apologise if anyone comes to a convention and later in the day I seem quite worn down and it is because mm -hmm. I am physically worn down. I'll get to a point where I'm drawing as hard as I can but now my hand hurts so much so I have to basically, there comes to a point in the day where after every single um, commission mm -hmm. I then say right I'm running off for a break now. And I'll mm -hmm. spend three minutes running my hand under cold water in the bathroom. And I'll just wait until it, like, goes numb. And then I come back downstairs and carry on working. I love this. I love it. It's such a, it's all such bad ideas. It makes me feel <laughs> happy. It's such awful ideas, but... I think, I, as a fan of your work, I think what, what, you're, what the people, you know, like, different fans that come to see you at conventions, I think what they can all do to help is, without asking, just start massaging your hand when you look stressed. <laughs> I think they can all do that. Just don't ask. Just walk up. Just you'll know. Just say that please Mike said it's okay. And just start doing it. And then please, just please. they can just like look at you while they do that and just massage your hand and then just the stare into my eyes. In. Yeah, like please that. Do that it. won't be that won't be remotely awkward or weird. That won't be weird at all. No, no, please don't do that. <laughs> no, that'd be the worst thing ever. That would be. That'd be something that I would do to make like a very close friend uncomfortable. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can imagine you doing that. Oh, I would definitely I do that. Up. I remember one night I was just, me and my friend were just giggling uncontrollably because we realized how funny and fun it was to try to put chapstick on your friend's lips for them. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried that. It is so, like, try to do it without laughing. It's so hard. What? I don't know why. I don't even remember how we came to that conclusion. I think I, one of us probably had chapstick, and then the other one said, oh, can you get me, please? And then just, like, pucker up our face. And then it, whatever. So what? No big deal. Yeah. So, so you're just sitting there with your friends puckering up your faces to each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then you're trying to put chapstick on their lips for them. And it's just, it just, it's just hilarious looking. It's just weird. It's just so weird. <laughs> I'm so going to try that. Holy try shit. it. I swear to God. You will not keep a straight face. <laughs> You're gonna the person that's making that's like okay, I'll, like oh, can you get me? And you try that casual, and then once you pucker your lips, you're gonna start going <laughs> like that, and then your friend's gonna lose it. I had a moment like that when I did makeup on a guy a little while back. He was doing uh -huh. one of them. Um, he was doing one of them. Uh, you know the. No, 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 no. It was like that cancer awareness thing that went around a little while back. Um, guys had to take photos of themselves wearing makeup for it as like this face thing. I can't remember what it was. Um, but yeah, he asked me to do makeup on him and just the whole time we were just laughing just continuously. Not because he like looked bad in it or anything, just because it was just so weird to be putting makeup on a mate who just literally does not wear it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it is. Is there a moment he realized he's like he's probably you, you finish and then he just goes, "I look fierce." He said and he looked like one of his ex-girlfriends, which I found hilarious. Oh, that would be really rough. <laughs> <laughs> July says that uh, one of their biggest fears is that they lose their drawing hand and they'd rather be completely leg legless without their right hand. And as a left-handed person, how dare you? I'm just kidding. I understand. Yeah, I but would just... absolutely rather lose anything other than my drawing hand. Completely. I remember in fourth grade, I fractured my left elbow falling out of a treehouse. And um, actually, I wasn't even in the treehouse. I was on the ladder. I was on the ladder. I didn't even get to have, be in the treehouse. I mean, you didn't I was even waiting have for a moment. I, you know, I was. I saw it earlier, but I wasn't even having fun in the treehouse. I was standing on the ladder waiting for a friend. Aww. And I was facing away from the tree. Then I fell and landed on my arm on a two by four. And then his friend, the friend didn't really have like. It's weird when you think back. You know how when you're a kid you don't really understand a situation, and then as an adult when you think back yeah. on it you're like that was really weird. Yeah. And it's totally one of those because I spent the rest of the day hanging out with him, just half crying, holding my arm, and like Aww. trying to go like play with him. Aww. And no one in his family seemed to like know something was wrong. But then as I get older, I realize, like, I think that was kind of, like, some things are going down with that family because, like, it, it, I remember his mom being asleep a lot, but it was the middle of the day, and then it was that thing where I'm like, I think, uh, I think, like, just half the family was drinking and didn't care, and I, I didn't really, I was too young to understand, understand like, what kind of, like, a semi- dysfunctional family, because usually families don't become dysfunctional until you're, you know, you're into high school, and then, like, you start, you start <laughs> understanding that parents are people, and then you're like, whoa, and then you start, you know, realizing all the weird things about your own family, mm -hmm. and um, so, but I was walking around all day just, like, holding my arm and being like, ah, and like, big sisters would be like, are you okay? I'd be like, yeah, I just fell a little, you know, and, uh, I don't even remember where I was going with this. Oh, that was my left arm, and that was the arm I used to draw even then and everything and I remember we had an assignment where we had to like pick a famous kind of artist or artwork and then we drew it and then the teacher bound it in a book I don't know where it is I wish I could find it and uh, so I did like a, a Mark Chagall drawing with my bad hand in fourth grade and I gotta say I was pretty proud of it no. I, think, uh, I think if you're in I think if you're on the spot and you have to do it you could at least make a Mark Chagall drawing because he's not very good he's not a very good artist <laughs> so I think you can at least as a fourth grader Make a Mark Chagall drawing with your bad hand if you had to, and I think uh, and any artist here uh, could could manage if, if they must. What about Mark Chagall? Uh, he couldn't. I think if he uh, had to use his bad hand, um, well, I don't even know. There's not a scale to compare, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't like Mark Chagall's art. He would come out better. Uh, no, it would be even worse. I think what I think it would be good because then we could learn how much worse it could be, which would be great. We're going full circle, guys. <laughs> Back to your uh, your idea of a gallery where you can see them. Oh my God, that's right. Yeah. That deserves, that, does a, that deserves another bite of cookie. There we go. How has your cookie lasted this long? What are you doing? I keep forgetting the cheer. <laughs> How can you forget about cookies? I don't know. I think it's between my constant wavering between satisfaction and dissatisfaction with the drawing is distracting me from the cookie presence. I think I'm finally getting somewhere where I feel happy about this drawing now. It took so long. It took so much longer than probably any drawing I've done recently. I'm finally feeling happy about it. Yeah, this this one's been this one's been a battle. Yeah, I don't know why. Like all of us have had that issue, really. Like something in it's been like, mm, what the hell? <laughs> kind of look. I want to look at everyone's. I haven't even had a chance to step back and look at everyone's pieces yet. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh yeah. You know that thing when you look at everyone else's and, and you're like, oh, there's more than yours. <laughs> yeah, like, I had that a minute ago. When I when I jumped around and jumped through your guys' stuff, I was just like, oh no, this is really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I just looked at everyone's and I was kind of like, uh oh, all right, no, okay, no, it's all right, Mike, you should still make art. <laughs> it's fine. That's it's still I, good. I think that's want. pretty. No matter what. Yeah. yeah. So. Absolutely. I love that. Like, there's there's the good and the bad version. There's the feelings you go to an art show and it, like it's so good, you just feel horrendous. You're just like, oh my god, that was so good. What am I gonna do? And then sometimes you go and it's so good, you're just like crazy jealous, but you're kind of like stoked jealous. You know, you're just like, yes. I love it yes. when you go to so an art gallery. Good. I feel horrible, <laughs> and you're all excited. Hmm? I love it when you go to an art gallery and you see someone who's like close to where you're at. It's like, oh, yeah. I could be in here. <laughs> yeah. I could do this. It's like, I could definitely. Oh, could there's, so, there's so many shows at galleries and even museums that, like, do you get that point, though, where you, you go to shows and you, you start actually realizing, like, well, yeah, I could do, I could, I could do this. I thing. could do you know, that. Like, like, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't that far out there. Like, all right, you know, starts feeling, starts feeling pretty good. I think I've stopped making progress, so thanks. That's what everyone thinks. No, I mean it with my picture, my current picture right here. Oh, I thought you meant in general. I was like, whoa. All right. No, I think, I think I've taken I this. As, yes, that's. Mm. I am. I'm at. The, I've plateaued. Hey, we're done. Call it a wraps. It's been fun, guys. I'm. Uh, I'm not making art anymore. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna go outside. On the top. <laughs> like Seinfeld. I like how much later you jumped in, Anthony, and like you're already like, well, I'm, 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 I'm still sitting here, kind of like, oh, I gotta do this. And well, this. you picked a. I mean, ink is really slow. Why is it so time consuming? It's just drawing. Why does it take so long? I thought I was saving time by kind of jumping into this medium. I guess well, it's just because there's so many lines, and that's really yeah, it. But. It is. I mean, the brush, you know, the brush work that you did, or was that with the marker? The thick uh, this was with the marker. I mean, that helps. You know, you're going to cut down a like, shit ton of time with that. But that's that. I didn't do that much brush pen on this one. Maybe that's what also made it kind of... Brush pen's quick on there, and usually I mix the two together, and I'll, I'll outline it out mm -hmm. with... Uh, with my one of my probably usually one of my micron pens, mm -hmm. and then I go back in with the uh, uh, with brush pen and get the really dark areas in, and then usually once I have that, then I come back with uh, with like a thicker micron and I start doing some of the cross hatching, and then I start mm -hmm. filling back in that way. Just the areas that I think need it. It's still a time consuming. Yeah. Normally, when I do ink, I, I do small, so I, I, it doesn't take very long. I totally didn't need to tape this paper down either. I, I, I've been working larger because it's just so much easier to lay in the proportions on a larger sheet of paper. Yeah. yeah. 
so I've been just kind of sticking with that for a while. Where do I want to crop this? Do I want his face to be a little off center like that? Want to, yeah, maybe I do. It's kind of a weird place to crop it. But why not? I make my own rules. Mm -hmm. I talk to myself while I use a ruler. I do what I want. I do what I want. You don't know me. Shut up. You don't know me. Well, maybe I don't like that. Well, it's too late. I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Roll with it. Roll with it. You don't know me. I could probably take the tape off this. I don't really need that. I didn't use I didn't use so much ink that it would warp the paper or anything. This drawing's okay as far as sucky drawings go. No, I, I I'm I was if I had to like do my own self critique, I don't like how rough my line work got over here. I mean I was trying to work faster and then this got really sloppy with the big marker, but I mean, I still have some more I'm going to do into it, but it's getting kind of somewhere. There's something that I noticed about yours that I actually really like. Um, mm -hmm. When you're learning to draw uh, comics, you get told a lot to be careful about how many lines you use. You yeah. get told that the more lines you put on the face, the older your person will look. Oh, yeah. But you manage <laughs> to avoid that somehow. You'll put loads of lines on, and yet you put them in just the right place that it matches the age. I think that's really so clever. many of my RGDs, like I aged the person by like ten years, and then over time I kind of started. You know what? You know what I think it was that is that I realized the difference between using um, like form topographic lines or more design flat shadow lines. Like I'll right. naturally do hatches this way because it's the way my hand moves best for my left hand, and those I'll intentionally lay in for shadows and kind of a flat design element. And then it's all about then battling those lines with the lines that are kind of the more topographic ones that, like, follow the structure. Right. Um, and so it's always been kind of a balance between the two, because if I do too much structure lines, it looks too kind of cylindrical and bland. And then if I do too much graphic lines, it's okay, but it doesn't really have as much life to it. And then if I don't mix them well, they get all jumbled like here, but if I start doing them right and knowing where to pick them. But it's hard because, like, in the photo, my photo reference, this side of his face is really dark, and I can only take that so yeah, far. Yeah, you really exaggerated it, didn't you? Yeah, when I when I kind of got that settled. And so and part I, of it is, is, just, is working larger, too, because the larger you work, the smaller the line is, you know, mm -hmm. the finer the line is in there. Finer lines yeah. look less like wrinkles, more like half tone. Yeah. All right. Only I have to get the angle right between where my where my waist is moving and where. Uh, I love this. I love doing this without a ruler. It's my one of my favorite parts. <laughs> Good straight line without a ruler. All by practicing shape. Oh, balls. <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> I messed it up right there. That's all right. It's a pretty good line. It's not my best line. Let's try again. I think if I start with my body leaning forward more, it will work better this time. And then come down. Move this whole thing. Oh, whatever. All right. Here we go. No. Got to get that rhythm. Get the rhythm. It's like bobsledding. Here we go. Oh, like a oh, bad start. That's okay. It always starts worse than it ends. Just like bobsledding. <laughs> Absolutely like bobsledding. Unless you're the Jamaican team, then it definitely ends worse than it starts. No, right, like, isn't the whole point of bobsledding that it has to start perfect, otherwise you screwed up? Yeah. Um, but not when your sled falls over. <laughs> then it doesn't matter how you started. True. But at least you tried. At least you, followed, you followed your dreams. I like I like movies about people with big dreams, even if they only will possibly get some mediocre level of success from it. It's like the uh, but I but I, I don't know if it's I actually genuinely like the idea, but I think it's kind of funny. Like that movie Rudy, where you know he wants to play for Notre Dame, 
play, you know, play football for Notre Dame. American football, not the uh, football football. And right. um, and I don't I don't follow uh, sports and footballs very well. But the idea that he, uh, you know, he's not really built to be a football player. He really shouldn't be playing football. He's probably not even very good at football. He just really wanted to play. And then he does one play that players do several times every game, thousands of times. <laughs> it's carried out of the stadium because it's like, hey, this guy that sucks did a thing that lives up to a mediocre standard of a normal guy. Like, And then that's like the carry out. The, Woo! Dream came true. I don't know. It's funny to me. I don't know why. I like. I love that. I, I don't know. Maybe that's. Maybe I. Maybe I. I can associate my own role in the art world like that. Like you know, I accomplished something that that a lot of other people will probably do better. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Carry out of the stadium, Rudy. Rudy. Come on, Mac. You know what I'm talking about. You. I you do. know the movie. You know. I haven't seen it in a long time, but yes, I. I, I know the movie. That's the movie you kind of forget about, but if you, like, catch it on TV, like, you won't change the channel. It's like when My Cousin Vinny's on TBS, and you're like, all right, I can do this, you know. I'm like, like Independence Day. <laughs> it's totally like Independence Day. <laughs> you know in your heart you should just change the channel. You know you should. We're going to give the aliens a virus. You know you should change the channel, and you don't. You sit through the whole movie. <laughs> Oh, My mom God. loves that movie. It's like her it's, favorite movie ever. It's They're coming out with a second one. Oh no, I'm worried. There's something about it. Like you can't change the channel when it's on. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that movie. Now I kind of want to watch it. <laughs> watch it Independence Day uh, Artist Lounge podcast. We'll just have a movie night uh, Artist Lounge and we'll watch Independence Day, make Independence Day drawings. I don't know if, I don't know if it's the wine talking, but that actually doesn't sound like that bad of an idea. No, it doesn't. What do you... I think I'm bordering on being done. Yeah, I think I'm getting pretty close, but I'm also currently trying to convince July that they should just draw with their bad hand for a whole year for no reason. No. <laughs> no, seriously, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> right, so I actually, I don't know how factually correct this is because I didn't peer review it, but I actually heard a thing that said that if you, so you know people can be ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. It says that if you aren't born ambidextrous and yet you try to be ambidextrous by teaching yourself to draw with the other hand as well, mm -hmm. you end up with two mediocre hands rather than two skilled hands because your other huh. one loses muscle memory and then the new one gains a bit of muscle memory and you just have two like meh hands well that makes more sense because I heard I read a review uh, written in America and it said if you try to be ambidextrous but not born that way you'll give birth to a gay son and I don't know if it's true <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know um, well I don't know I, well, I, I guess because you're only spending half the time with one hand. Yeah, rather than training the other one as well. Like, uh -huh. you're just doing semi-training for the two of them. I could see it. I could see it. You don't sound very convinced. I don't know. You know, I don't know. It'd be like, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like when you try masturbating with the other hand, and you're like, this is really right. weird, and it's not working, you know? And so... If you do a little bit with both hands, it's like maybe you'll just never, maybe it'll just never work, you know. <laughs> I like to just say I, I might just get things weirder and weirder in the end because it's like at this point I know there's if there's only like you know like a few people watching. There's like <laughs> two viewers, <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll take care of them. But um, yeah, and, no, gone. Gone. and they're gone, and the show's over. You <laughs> know, after I said those things, that was the exact moment I remembered you talking about how your mom will watch this. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh yeah. That's no, right. My mom can't be asked to watch all the way through to the end. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm. I, it's gonna be my new goal just to just make really awkward family conversations. You have to like sit through after these now. Be like it was really good. <laughs> Let's talk about what Mike's contributing to this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saw a thing. I think it was on Artist Lounge, and it's probably the best advice I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Someone said, make artwork like your parents don't exist. 
That is so brilliant. I remember that. I really love that idea. I saw that I and that I was w- like, that's so true. I think that applies if you're like trying to be a stand-up comic as well. I think it applies to a lot of things. Anything mm. creative where you've got a you've got that level of freedom where you have to say stuff that's inside your head that maybe mm. you don't want to say in front of your parents. But I think, I have, I think yeah. it's important. It, it's oh it is. You have to be able to go into it, you know. And it's I my friend I visited in LA, I would mention I don't know if I could like mention I probably could, but I don't know if I can like mention the book he's doing or whatever or whatever because it's being published, so I don't know if there's oh, don't say any things. specifics then. So I guess I can't, right? I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is it, it's an auto, it's a you know an autobiography and about his family, and um, he did not hold back in writing that Ooh. book, and it was that thing where it's it's the family going through the uh, the struggle of the the father um, getting diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's. And it was already oh, after, wow. like, his family. His mom is, like, a cancer survivor, so all this time oh, they're dealing gosh. with their cancer, then the dad gets Lou Gehrig's. And uh, it's kind of like a, you know, it's a hard, yeah. hard story and also a very dark comedy. Like, he just, like, he'll just say, like, nothing holds him back. He'll say anything. And he had a lot of trouble with family members uh, when he would, because he first started as a blog, and he just was writing about these things as they were happening quite a fascinating blog because it was just interesting because it was really you really got the idea because since he since he didn't wasn't sugarcoating but he also had a really dark sense of humor you were getting the real idea of like how like what a disease like this will really do to a family you know yeah and he was in um he, he's a you know a, a screenwriter now and he was taking a class back when he was in school he was working on this on this uh, story about his family, and he wasn't he wasn't embellishing anything. He was just saying exactly what was happening, what people said, how exactly how he felt. And at one point, like in a critique of students, like, okay, I I can see this thing, but when you went into this about like what was this started happening then with like your sister during the time, that's a little much. No one's gonna ever believe that <laughs> it really happened, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he wrote like he wrote like. <laughs> Like the people weren't there to see it, you know, and it it did definitely cause like static. I mean, they're all good, but yeah, I mean, it was the point where you know family members were really upset, and uh, you know, and when you're writing a book like that, you have to like meet with a lawyer and read through the whole book with the lawyer, which he said was pretty funny because he wrote he would he had a very like crude sense of humor, so he got to hear like a lawyer, and the lawyer couldn't um, couldn't type well, so he would dictate just by speaking into his computer. So he got to, like, hear the lawyer have to, like, re- repeat these really offensive lines and really dirty jokes just into oh a... God. But in, like, a, a very straightforward lawyer speak, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, that whole thing. But, yeah, in regards to in regards to, to that, I think that's great advice. I think you have to... I mean, if you want to be honest with yourself about it, yeah, <laughs> you can't really restrict yourself, you know? Yeah, I think I'm only just starting to get to the edge of that because it's not been something I've felt comfortable like talking about anything that I'd think, oh no, I wouldn't want my mum or dad to see it because they share everything that I do. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, and then they're going to hear you say that right now in this and then and then that talk's going to be even more awkward, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> they, I, I think I'm just banking on the fact that... Uh, my my parents don't really use a lot of social network stuff or anything very much, and you know, so it's kind of like they wouldn't. Like, they never they find would, out. Yeah. yeah, you know, and now that's I know that's obviously the the prime thing. Like, yeah, you can troll Mike very easily, but but I think it's that. I mean, you know, eh, whatever. <laughs> my dad comes over and he's like, I only know what you do because I follow your Twitter. <laughs> 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 How are you guys doing with your drawings? Uh, I think it's okay. I don't really like everything I did, mm. but I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's just yeah. fine. That's what it is. This drawing's fine. It's fine. How about yours? I I feel exactly the same. Like there's something that I haven't got right, and I can't figure out what it is but there's something that I'm not quite happy with, but 
there's also other bits I do like. So I think I'm at a happy medium now. <laughs> yeah. Mine, I think, I did, whatever. It's a lot of little things with mine that bother me, and there's some general things, you know, forehead too wide, blah, 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 but all in all, eh, it's fine. It's fine. How about you, Anthony? I'm happy with the portrait. I'm just not happy with the background. Like I said, I just, I should probably should just cut it out and did my own thing, but. Uh, if there's any consolation, I, I don't mind the background. I think it's fine. It was hard picking a photo for this one, though. There was, was you know, it was, yeah. There, there was no definite, like, yes. And when we start these, we don't want to do one that's already been covered really well. It's kind of fun yeah. to venture out into ones that don't have a lot of art for them. Yeah, we try to find one that doesn't really have any comments on it or has, like, maybe one comment on it so that we sure. can kind of get a bit of, like, attention to it. Mm-hmm. Like, I saw quite a few good ones, but they had, like, 17 comic comments on yeah. them. And at that point, so, yeah. like, what's the point? You've got amazing artists already, so... I don't do that those hardly at all, ever, anyway, so... But it does make it kind of interesting, then, because you guys end up picking it, so I kind of flew it a little bit. Oh, you did. You sent me the picture of the odd, but... Yeah. Jumping in kind of blind and something, something somebody else would pick is a little different. Jeez. Some areas I think are too dark and I almost want to make them darker. That's a weird, that's a you're weird craving. A very, yeah, you're a very strange person. How's your I'm, cookie doing? Speaking. I was just going to say, I was going to blame it on the cookie. You know, yeah. I'm just a little bit over halfway. I just keep forgetting yeah, this there. Just, you can see it over in the corner there. Yeah. Here we can... Definitely be getting a cookie for next week, too. That's for sure. Maybe I'll see if I can get a cookie. You should. Okay. I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I could just probably sign this where it is and call it a wraps. Maybe, I don't know, I could just keep adding little lines forever. That's but, what I'm thinking, uh, so I want to, like, know. stop myself like so I don't the, keep adding stuff. Yeah, because the hair is definitely darker, so I know I could do more there, but I don't think it really matters. Yeah, I'm notoriously bad for that on there when I say, okay, I'm done, and then I would, like, fidget with it for, like, another hour. But Yeah, maybe we'll call it a wraps then. Yeah? So I was wondering, because we didn't do a proper, like, uh... Goodbye last time. Um, Are we supposed to sing a song together? No. <laughs> oh, I think we're going to well. No, I'm just kidding. No, I don't do singing. That's not my Goodbye. thing. Goodbye. <laughs> so I thought maybe we could finish off with uh, telling people where they can find our stuff um, and also if you guys have got anything coming up in the week. So, Mike, do you want to start? Just let people know your social medias, your website, and then if you've got any arty things this week. I kind of want to do the song. No, um, so I got to... <laughs> okay, so my website is mcstefan.com. You can follow me. I mostly use Instagram, which is at mcstefan, just all lowercase, one word. Uh, I usually just post that to Tumblr, which is the, the same, at MC Stefan. I don't ever really use my Twitter. I haven't logged in in that in a long time. But you can follow me there or on Reddit. I am Funisher on Reddit. I'm uh, lurking around the uh, Artist Lounge. And um, as far as things going, yeah, I mean, we just had our last opening at FM. Uh, artist Naeem Brown have a studio there, a bunch of other awesome artists. Uh, check that out. And... Uh, that's it right now. Nothing else to announce coming up. That's all I got. Cool. What about you, Mike? Uh, Anthony? Uh, you know, it's actually, like I said, other people call me Mac, so it's not a big deal. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, for social media stuff on there, uh, I am Mac Anthony on most everything. Uh, Reddit, I'm MacAnthony. Tumblr, it's MacAnthony30. Uh, Instagram is MacAnthony30. Um, 
you can find me on Twitter at Mac Anthony, but I don't usually put most of my art stuff on there because I have a, a separate one. I think it's Mac Anthony Art on Twitter, um, which is basically I think all everything that I have. Oh, I have a Facebook <laughs> too. It's just Anthony Nelson Art, um, but I don't. Most everything that goes up onto Instagram uh, will be there. Or well, anything that's on my Facebook will be on Instagram because uh, I post automatically from from there to, to there. That is the um, best feature. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's because I just uh, Facebook annoys me, so I don't I don't go to Facebook very often, but I have to. Because, you know, that's like the only thing my family uses. So um, yeah. <laughs> so it's just there. I just use it. I get reminded every now and then when I get a notification on my phone. That somebody's birthday is coming up, and that's like the only thing I ever use Facebook for. But um, uh, as far as stuff coming up on there, it's all just local. I have a couple of local shows that I'm getting ready for. Um, not really doing anything big for my online stuff. Although I started doing, I have this really nice little sketchbook on there. It's like five and a half by eight. It's a toned sketchbook on there. I'm gonna try and fill the whole thing up with gouache figure stuff. So I've started been doing that right now, but I'll probably post something on that once I actually get more than two or three pictures in it. Awesome. And how about yourself? I have a cat. <laughs> is the cat on screen? Wait, wait, wait. Oh my god, I'll switch windows. <laughs> Which cat's that? Oh wait, he pulled my ear my earplugs out. Ah uh. Which okay. kitty is that? This is Cosmo, and he apparently likes to sit on my earplugs, and he is the best cat because he does not care. He will just let you pick him up and wave him about, and he will just sit there purring. <laughs> that is rare in a cat. Most it cats will never do that. He is best cat. Hello. <laughs> um, that is so, awesome. Yeah. So I'm a gamer draws on YouTube and Reddit. Um, this show will go live on my channel, so the channel that you're watching right now, you can subscribe to see our next um, episodes. I have a video coming out on Wednesday. I haven't completely decided what I want to do with the video. I've got a few different options that I could film. So if anyone wants anything specific, feel free to comment below or anything, and I'll see if I can do something about that. Um, and then basically everything else I am Geysera. So facebook.com forward slash Geysera and at Geysera on Twitter and um, Instagram. Uh, my company is Geysera Inc. So I go under that name for most things. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> I want a cat, so I, want, I need a pet right here. Yeah. Right here. This would be the pet where the pet goes. Need one of these. A bunch of pile of gerbils. Just billions of gerbils. Look at this guy. Billions and billions of gerbils. I think that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let him loose on the table and see what happens. <laughs> that makes his own agenda. Brilliant. Well, I think everyone's right. artwork really turned out well. I really like it. <laughs> it was a good round. It was a good round. Yeah. Thank Are we all going to post it together, or is it just going to... Yeah, yeah, we'll post it. it. We'll to, go post it. To Ready Gets Drawn. Yeah, absolutely. Um, see a and better. If anyone has any questions that they think of whilst they're watching the playback of this video, um, you can leave them in the comments below, and then if we see anything interesting, or even in the uh, in the Reddit thread or something like that, um, and we'll pick them up and talk about them next week, which is what we did during this show. So we'll see you again uh, next week. Thank you for joining us, Anthony. Sure. Thank you for having me. Peace. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>